Hey, race fans, Hall of Famer Daryl Walter here. You know, it's time to drop the green flag on another edition of Leaning Right and Turning Left with Sadler and the Senator, powered by Pacematic. So, hey, pull those bells tight one more time. Here's my buddy Hermie Sadler and Senator Bill Stanley. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's see what they have to say, boys and girls. I'm Virginia State Senator Bill Stanley, and I'm leaning right. And I'm former NASCAR driver and Fox Sports analyst Hermie Sadler, and I'm turning left, leaning right, and turning left with Sadler and the Senator, and we are always powered by Pace Matt. Hey there, Herm. What's up, buddy? Yeah, you know, sitting next to you, having a good time, having a great day. A great day it is. A great day indeed. Where are we? Uh, we are high atop the Stanley Law Group skyscraper overlooking the beautiful capital of the Commonwealth of Virginia here in the Stanley Law Group conference room, which is now the Stanley Law Group studio. So we're both together in Richmond, which I like. I like when we're both together. Yep. Uh, we've had a big day. We've had a big day. Getting ready for a big trial. Mm-hmm. Um, watching as we were sitting here today, we were watching things come across the computer, you know, new filings by the government. Uh, you know, the days are counting down to our November 2nd trial. Uh, it doesn't seem like... Uh, the government has it all together yet, but, you know, I like when the opponent is a little off So, uh, to the extent that you can, for the people that listen to this podcast, small business owners across the Commonwealth that use this podcast as a way to stay in tune with the lawsuit, what is the quickie version of what's going on? So, uh, right now we're doing, uh, uh, we've filed experts. We filed one expert, the... Attorney General's office has submitted multiple experts uh, that I think after initially telling us they were going, or the feeling was that we were going to let it play out, and then hopefully get it back to the General Assembly. Right, and what we're left with now is a battle of the experts, and you know you count them all up on their side. Uh, I don't know how they think they're going to get this trial off in one day on November second. We just put one expert up that was went to the right of the heart of the matter. These are skill games, and the interpretation of the law as applied to these games, what does it do or what does it not do? And the Attorney General's office is putting out like a, an expert witness that says gambling is addictive, except it's better controlled inside the casinos because they have helplines. If you're addicted to gambling, you can call the helpline, and that's why they're better instead of these unregulated mobs of registered skill games in convenience stores, truck stops, restaurants, and bars. Uh, then there's another one now. There are two other ones that say this is not a skill game even though the attorney general itself has said in a letter of opinion it's a skill game even though the defendant abc said we investigated these games we tested these games they're skill games now they're arguing they're not skill games and they're re-arguing that they have sovereign immunity <laughs> an issue that was determined by this court in the first phase of the lawsuit and that was denied by the court. They're relitigating, it seems to be, the things that have already been decided either by their own clients or by the court itself. So a lot of mishmash going on on their side. We're just plowing forward. We've got a very, I think, tight way of, of prosecuting this case uh, on behalf of small businesses and skill games in Virginia and allowing small businesses to participate in the gambling market, in the gaming marketplace here in the Commonwealth, not be excluded, to allow their participation to overcome any monopoly of these out-of-state casinos that they're trying to obtain. I think we're in a good spot. Um, but, you know, you were asking me tonight, hey, man, you want to go to dinner? And I'm like, I got to read all this stuff because you see the stack right to my left. You, you are going to dinner. It's pretty healthy. Well, can I read while I'm sitting there? You can read while you're sitting there. Okay. Um, so <laughs> are they from a – I'm not an attorney. Obviously, I'm severely vested in this case. Right. But it sounds like they're bringing in experts to refute what their own people testified to last time we were in court. That's an excellent point. That's an excellent point. <laughs> that seems to be what they're doing. They're trying to say the attorney general is wrong, even though we're the attorney general. The ABC is wrong, even though we're defending the ABC. It'd be like me going into a court of law defending somebody and saying, my client was lying. I mean, I don't think that really does very well for any case that I might have, let alone this one where they're now contradicting the lawyers for Virginia are contradicting the clients, which are the governor, the Commonwealth of Virginia, 
the Virginia ABC, and the Attorney General himself, who have all said these are skill games. We're now fighting that battle again, according I, to them. I'll say one thing before we move on to something else, because we don't want this to be about this lawsuit every single show, but a lot of people want to hear about it. I get calls every day about the status of it. But one thing I will say, uh, I have a relationship with somebody affiliated with ABC, and the feeling that I got from that conversation, in my opinion— mm -hmm is that the attorney general is even, you know, the ABC doesn't, is not even really feeling what the attorney general's office is now trying to do and say. Uh, the ABC never gets enough credit for the outstanding job that they did during the tax and regulation period that was all testified to in the last preliminary injunction hearing we had last December. But they did a great job taking on something, uh, made it simple, effective, kept people on the up and up as far as the way they were operating their games, their ABC licenses, all that. But I just, I, I don't know this, but my feeling is that the attorney general's office now is, is acting on behalf of ABC. But the people I talk to in ABC are like, dude, we don't agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it kind of shows, it shows in what's coming out of the office of the attorney general in terms of legal pleadings, especially when there's legal pleadings, like I just said, contradict your own client really doesn't uh you know doesn't it's not a good look but we'll see and we're rapidly approaching those times we have actually actually depositions of um their one of their experts tomorrow so we'll find out what what their opinion is they've given a report but now we get to ask them live uh, what they think kind of create their testimony or at least challenge some of their testimony we think their experts are irrelevant, immaterial, not relevant to the court case, should be excluded. We just got a motion today from the Attorney General's office saying your expert should be excluded. So we'll see how that goes. So we've got a bunch of pretrial motions coming up as we prepare for this trial, uh, which hopefully will go off on November 2nd. But if they line up their expert witnesses and we have the witnesses we have, this thing's going to take longer than a day. And I don't know. We, we they. We're still fighting over the pleadings, the amended pleading, which just included the new language. They demurred. They plea and barred. They did the same things they did early on that the court overruled. They're doing again. So we're still bogged down even in pleadings because rather than fight this head on and let's get a decision, in my opinion, the Commonwealth of Virginia is continuing to distract and obfuscate make things harder, not streamline the process, not get going, and bringing up the same issues we've already litigated. Uh, and it just, it's like, what, do you not want to go forward? You want to delay? Because that seems to be the strategy based on what I'm looking at right now. So we got uh, some leaning right moments coming up. We've got a busy weekend of turning left moments to discuss on the show today. A lot going on we in do. the world of NASCAR yep. and the Smart Modified Tour. Uh, also today, we've got a special guest. You want to talk about our guest coming up? I do. And, and the funny thing is also we were both down at Hickory in my motor coach. And we recorded a front end of this podcast that we just didn't like, did we? We That's a nice way of saying it. <laughs> so we're starting <laughs> we over. We had a lot we're, going on. Yeah. We're starting over and we're, we're more fresh. It's, uh, it's the week of the 12th, ladies and gentlemen. And you'll get this tomorrow. So this is Wednesday. And uh, we're going to have a very special guest on. And I brought the guest. I finally brought a sports athlete to the forefront. And that is Erica Porter, a wonderful, wonderful pro wrestler. She's in the Women of Wrestling Wow circuit. Um, very famous. Um, has an inspirational story to tell. Has great wrestling stories to tell about. And also has an inspirational story as well about her fighting cancer. And you know... This is Breast Cancer Awareness Month here in October of 2022. Yep. She is fighting at stage four breast cancer. And she has got the best attitude I think I've ever heard of anybody who, who faces that uphill battle. And yet she's not even sitting alone, you know, wallowing in her own self-pity. She's taking action. And so we're going to talk to her about uh, her very important campaign, a not-for-profit campaign that is absolutely, I think, wonderful. In fact... I'm going to grab the piece of paper right now, and I'm going to mention it even before she comes on. She's having a Wrestling with Cancer event here in Richmond. 
which is coming up on the 5th and the 6th of November. Uh, so you want to sponsor, you want to give her uh, donations, you want to come to this. She's going to bring all of the wrestlers from Women of Wrestling WOW, the WOW circuit. Uh, they're all going to be there. Um, they're going to be there for a meet and greet. They're going to meet all their fans, take pictures. Um, you're going to have an unbelievable event. And if you want more information about this event and attend it, uh, absolutely go to and contact Carly Nelson, C-A-R-L-I, Nelson at Carly, C-A-R-L-I, at MonumentalConsultingLLC.com. Or you can reach them at 804-398-8938. But please, uh, this is an incredible uh, organization that she's a part of. It's going to be an incredible event. They've asked me to MC. You're going to be there, Hermie. Yeah. And we're going to have a great time raising money for a good cause. And this is an important cause to talk about. So I'm really happy about this guest. And I brought her. Erica Porter, and I've, also known as Jungle Girl. Jungle Girl. And I've heard uh, the few times that I've spoken with her, just a, a ball of energy, positivity, which is what we need. And I've got a little idea, Bill. Sure. What's that? I think since we don't have our third wheel today, Shep Moss. Shep Moss. That I think there's a chance, or at least we should, I mean, people can tune in and listen to see if we accomplish it. I think we ought to try to get the Jungle Girl <laughs> to read this week's Manscaped ad. That's a great idea. You think she'll do it? I don't know. She seems pretty confident. Okay. I think she can pull it off because it, it's a. We didn't write the script. We did not. Obviously, the ad. It's a lot going on limited. with this week's script. Yeah, and I think it's a theme <laughs> getting towards as we come towards Halloween. Oh, we, we don't need all that right now. <laughs> I'm just, it's a theme. And I don't know that we were ready to read it. So let's see if she'll do we, it. We're going to see if we can get Jungle Girl to read this week's Manscaped ad. You have to, this is what we call a teaser uh -huh. in the entertainment business. You'll have to tune in to see. Huh. If we can make that happen. It's kind of like Life Cereal. I ain't eating it. You eat it. <laughs> Let's get Mikey. <laughs> Let's Mike, get Jungle Girl. Mikey hates everything. Yeah. She'll eat um, everything. So we got that coming up. Uh, that'll be a, a great discussion and gives us an opportunity to create awareness for a great event coming up in the Richmond area. So if you want to raise some money, get out and have some fun, watch some wrestling, do it all. It's a two-day event. We'll mention more about it uh, later when... When, uh, when she joins the show. should be yeah, a lot of one fun. One day's a dinner. I think that's a Saturday night. And then Sunday, they're going to be at Hardywood on the 6th of November with all the wrestlers out there for a big main event. Uh, you're, you're not going to want to miss this. And it's great for the city of Richmond, and it's great for a great cause. So uh, we'll talk a lot more about it, I'm sure, with her. But it's something we should not overlook. We should all participate in because it's a very good cause. Let's lean right. Let's lean right. Let's lean right, indeed. Um, look, mine are short today. I know, usually they're not short. Because I have a lot to talk about. Left lunacy is is something that we're just seeing more and more of. And I'm going to show some semblance of actually a Democrat coming to their senses, finding middle ground, and leaving the Democrat Party. you remember Tulsi Gabbard? I do. She ran for president. Yep. She was the one that called out Kamala Harris when Kamala Harris was for non-criminalization of marijuana, of how she had put over six or 7,000... San Francisco in as a prosecutor as the prosecutor Sam the DA of San Francisco put him in jail for marijuana possession now she's acting like she never did but it was so compelling a a, a minute 15 uh, second statement from Tulsi Gabbard that she put on Twitter that I listened to that was not only heartfelt but I think quite frankly summed up exactly what's going on and why uh, the Democrats are, are disaffecting so many people, middle-of-the-road people, regular people, even Democrats, to the point where they can no longer follow what is happening in their party and the policy decisions and positions that they take. So I asked Brad Tuesday, our fearless producer, to pull down the minute 15 second, about minute 20 second Tulsi Gabbard statement. And I'm, I'm, I want to play it in its entirety because I think it's very poignant. But I think it's spot on. And I think she hits all the right notes and all the right tones of common sense. And so this is from a Democrat who ran for president, who is now leaving the Democrat Party for these reasons, Tulsi Gabbard. 
I can no longer remain in today's Democratic Party that's under the complete control of an elitist cabal of warmongers who are driven by cowardly wokeness, who divide us by racializing every issue and stoking anti-white racism, who actively work to undermine our God-given freedoms that are enshrined in our Constitution, who are hostile to people of faith and spirituality, who demonize the police but protect criminals at the expense of law-abiding Americans, who believe in open borders, who weaponize the national security state to go after their political opponents, and above all, who are dragging us ever closer to nuclear war. Now, I believe in a government that's of the people, by the people, and for the people. Unfortunately, today's Democratic Party does not. Instead, it stands for a government that is of, by, and for the powerful elite. Now, I'm calling on my fellow common sense, independent-minded Democrats to join me in leaving the Democratic Party. If you can no longer stomach the direction that the so-called woke Democratic Party ideologues are taking our country, then I invite you to join me. How about some of that? Pretty accurate. I think she's been lean, uh, she's been leaning right and turning left with Sadler and the senator because that's what we've been talking about. When are you gonna get her on the show? Um, Brad, line that up. She, I think she's a great common sense politician. Quite frankly, when she was running for president, that was the one I feared the most. I, I didn't fear at the time Joe Biden because she made the most sense and was practical. And she's from Hawaii, and so for her to say that takes a lot of guts. Now, do you think that's showing up on the mainstream media? Heck no. No. <laughs> Hell no. But quite frankly, I think she speaks for a lot of people. And not just, you know, Democrats, not just independents. She speaks for Republicans, too, because this is what we rail against. We're like, hey, man, you know, we used to have a similar ideal, which was what was best for the country. We just had different ways in our minds or even in principle on how to accomplish those things. Well, now the Democrats are not even recognizable from your from your daddy's Democrat Party. I mean, this is such a transformation of a political pro, uh, party that now is in control and has power. And with her u using and abusing uh, that power in order to fundamentally change our nation causes people like Tulsi Gabbard to say, enough. And whether we're Republican, look, I'll work with Democrats on issues. We'll, we'll disagree on some. But enough. Enough. Let's get back to what's great about America. Tulsi Gabbard summed that up, I thought, in one minute. And I think it's uh, food for everybody's uh, thought. As we go to the midterm elections just a couple weeks away, we might have a change in leadership, at least at the congressional level, which will create gridlock and stop the madness, but may not, may not bring us back to where we were just yet, but can stop what they're doing on the liberal side to pulling us where we don't want to go as a country. Hope that... Um when people like Tulsi Gabbard speak out, people listen because, and I make this comment sometimes about our Lieutenant Governor Winston Sears, and I mean it in the most respectful way possible. When you see Winston Sears step up to the podium and start talking, you don't expect her to say and have the views that she has because in most people's minds, people like her are not supposed to think that way. So to me, it's refreshing that when she talks of common sense, practical issues and, and, and you know, how she doesn't want to be looked at. Tulsi Gabbard, same way. Yeah. She, you just don't expect her to, yeah. to, um, to, to say what she's saying there. And she was very popular. Uh, is very popular. Yeah. So uh, I would anticipate that in the next several years, you'll see her skyrocket up uh, through the Republican Party uh, pretty quickly because she's she's been one of the few people that appears to be not afraid to to come out and say what's on her mind when it certainly is um, not what people around her have been used to hearing her say. So, look, if you if your life experiences make you think different things or have a different outlook than you did yesterday, last week, last month, last year. Some people are afraid to, to verbalize that, and obviously yeah. she's not. Yeah, and I mean, that's that's growth as a human being. Sure. And seriously, seeing something that's going on, like we're seeing 
in the world today under the Biden administration saying this isn't right. I mean, Biden's just kind of hemming and hawing about possible nuclear war, which he brings up. But yet it was his policies of funding, you know, this the, the Ukrainians. And certainly we want to protect the Ukrainian uh, men, women and children from unnecessarily being drawn into this war. But they're just ramping and amping it up. And he seems so nonchalant. Oh, yeah. Putin's threatening nuclear war or use of nuclear weapons. But see, that feeds the, per, the, the entities that feed the Democratic Party, which is the industrial military complex. Um, I could go right through everything that she mentioned, uh, but we've already done it on the show. We do it on, uh, all the time, pointing this out. But something's got to change if we're to leave our children with a country that gave us the same freedoms and abilities and that we make a more perfect union that's going to benefit everyone in society, not create special groups and polarize everybody and call one kid the oppressor and the other kid the oppressed, you know, making children feel bad about them themselves and their parents separating from their parents unless they submit to the doctrine of the, of the woke public school system. I mean, this all has to stop, and I think she said it so very well. Feeding into that is my second leaning right moment, which is here in the Commonwealth of Virginia, Herm. This just happened on October 10th, and I'm reading from the Daily Wire, so I give them the credit. Now, I have a subscription. If you don't, go get yourself one. Uh, it teaches you a lot. A journalist, Dan Levitt, called Child Protective Services on Virginia State Senate candidate Tina Ramirez, reporting her for child abuse because of her opinion on Columbus Day, differed from his. She basically, uh, she basically said... She and he got in some kind of Twitter battle about uh, the PayPal, you know, the PayPal fraud, about disinformation, finding people twenty five hundred dollars. Well, this this journalist, Bates, uh, Tina Ramirez, who's a candidate for Virginia State Senate seat coming up in twenty twenty three. He says to her in Twitter, why are you celebrating torture, rape, murder and enslavement, meaning Columbus Day? OK. And her response was. I teach my daughter real American history, quote. I refuse to join the radical left's campaign to erase history, which caused this David Levitt cat to then uh, try to get, and I'm going to read this from the story. First, he responded by attempting to get some 330,000 of his followers to harass Ramirez by reporting her to Child Protective Services. Quote, his Twitter quote was, can someone please call Child Care Services on Tina Ramirez, who's teaching her child to be a racist? And then, since none of those 330,000 followers did that, he decided to make the call himself, s sat online uh, putting out tweets while he was waiting because, you know, the Child Protective Services, uh, DSS, Department of Social Services, uh, their hotline is, you know, it takes a while to get there. So he then tweets and tweets and tweets uh, about him holding, and he is seriously, when he finally got off hold, Reports Ramirez for child abuse for teaching her about Columbus Day, not, as you and I found out, from one of the attorney generals who was representing uh, the Commonwealth of Virginia. In your court case, remember, we were trying to schedule some motions last year, and the judge said, well, we can't do it on that day. It's Columbus Day. And the attorney general, deputy attorney general, responded, no, it's Indigenous Peoples Day, to which the court then replied, well, that might be fine and good, but every calendar I have in front of me says Columbus Day. So it's Columbus Day. Well, he was complaining and now going to this Levitt journalist uh, and is complaining to DSS. Ramirez responds back on Twitter, mighty bold and liberal of you to lecture a Hispanic mother with a black daughter on racism. What's next? Are you going to lecture me on women's rights? And his response, this journalist who's now on hold with the Department of Social Services reporting her for teaching her daughter about Columbus Day, he responds on a tweet that having a black child doesn't make you any less racist. I mean, judge, jury, and executioner, and a liberal journalist, okay? And then he finally calls Child Protective Services to report child abuse because Ramirez taught her daughter about Christopher Columbus and real American history. Uh, <laughs> unbelievable. The radical left here, if you teach your children about Columbus Day and you tweet about it, now believe that's an act of child abuse. 
and you should be subject to the government's intervention by making a report to Department of Social Services in the Commonwealth of Virginia. I mean, here's a guy that called CPS on a single mother because he doesn't agree with her view of history and what she teaches and chooses to teach her daughter. That, to me, wraps up everything we've been talking about with the public school system trying to indoctrinate our children, with the media trying to create the narrative and stoke racism and promote wokeism is summed up in this one tweet and the fact that, quite frankly, a journalist gets his his shorts in a wad and decides he's going to call CPS on somebody for teaching Columbus Day to their daughter. Have you no, no shame? Have you no shame, David Levitt? That's despicable. That's the wokeism. That's the liberal lunacy that we're talking about. And I mean summed up in one act. And good for you, Tina Ramirez, for standing up for, for your daughter, for the truth about history, and f- standing up against these liberal wingnuts like David Levitt. I never really truly understood how powerful the media, especially the liberal left media, how much power they have to not only get out and preach and promote the narrative they want, but how much power they had in squashing conservative media. It just gets completely, they can just just wash it away. I mean, like overpower it like I never understood until a couple years ago. When I hear stories like this, it's just sad. And when I go back now and think about all the things, different subject, but same same problem, all the issues with Hunter Biden and all his problems and overseas business dealings and monies he was paid and the bad position that has put his family and then by proxy our country in, it's like nobody talks about it. No. Joe Biden... I saw a clip, you know, several, maybe a year ago or so now, is, you know, to me, once somebody tells you a lie, they're a liar. I just can't help it. Right. I saw a thing where Joe Biden was telling, this was, you know, probably back in the 70s maybe, he's speaking to a group of people and he told them that he was number one in his class in law school at Syracuse University. (laughs) Got multiple degrees. Yeah. And then it comes out, the truth be told, he was like next to last. In his law class. At meant number Turkey. one from the bottom. But I'm saying. <laughs> well, if you're not number one, what? you're number two, if you know what I'm saying. What? <laughs> but but nobody ever talks about it. Yeah. Nobody ever. He does that all the time. He said he was Puerto Rican, raised by the Puerto Rican community. He he said he got in a fight with a guy named, when he was, um, he said he was a lifeguard at a mostly minority uh, utilized pool. And he beat up some gangster named Corn Pop. He makes up this crap all the time. He says he said his whole house caught on fire not too long ago when lightning struck his house and just burned a little bit of his kitchen up. He was trying to identify with the people down in Hurricane Hurricane Ian. I mean, the the man is just a a interminable liar. And we let it go. And the the press does nothing about it. And the, and what are they going to do about this? I mean, here's a single mother who's running for political office. And this nutcase, David Levitt, is tying up phone lines for hours, which prevent real calls about child abuse from coming in because he doesn't believe in this single mother's choices in how to educate her child and tries to basically cancel her. Tries to get 330,000 people to call her up and, or to call social services on her because he's such a wuss and then has to do it himself and complains about the wait times on the phone. But what what in the hell? I mean, this to end, you know what the press does? Nothing. This should be outrageous. This is a member of the press corps doing this to a political candidate who's a single mother and calling her a racist because of her teaching her children about Columbus Day. What the hell? I mean, where 
you know, you're exactly right. The press has coddled Hunter Biden, but it's also they used to be the fourth estate. They would report independently away, not influenced by government. But now they influence government. Now they know that they have this power not of to be independent and report fairly and the truth. You know, most people will not remember what we remember. Walter Concrete, <laughs> Cronkite, uh, you know, Roger Mudd. I mean, those were real journalists. Now we have sycophants that are pushing an agenda and trying to harm people. And we have sycophants who hide what if that was a Trump, if that was Don Jr. that had that laptop, he would have been he would have been burned at the stake. But no. Hunter's a drug addict. He's recovering. And yet he committed and, and not just some high crimes, but maybe some treasonous things and in, in, in improper relationships with foreign nations that want to do us harm. There are hundreds of illegal immigrants coming to our country every day. President Biden has never been to the border. Vice President Harris is supposed to be the czar of the border crisis. As far as I know, never been, never been there. Never been there. And unless you watch only one of the few conservative type uh, news sources, you have not a clue that how bad it is and the fact that um, none of the people in power have gone to check it out. And every day there's actually people, border control agents, asking for help mm -hmm. and explaining the situation, how dire it is, the dangers of it, all these things. And if you don't look for it, you'll never find it. Yeah, and and they're the ones accusing those border agents of whipping when they're riding horses, whipping migrants. When, in fact, it was just released that uh, Secretary Mayorkas knew that that wasn't the case, but they pushed that narrative because it fits that narrative. And the press pushed that narrative, didn't question it. And when, when it turned out that that didn't happen, guess what? They never reported that. Never. Because it doesn't fit the narrative. They moved along by now. As I always say to my clients in, in high-profile criminal cases, the indictment is on the front page. The acquittal after trial is on page 18 on the inside of that newspaper. In the same way that when they get caught, oh, remember Hunter Biden's laptop was fake. Russian plant. They had what? Security officials, head of NSA's, former CIA director say, this is clearly a Russian operative act. They censored the New York Post. Then it turns out, oh, FBI had it before the guy turned it over, I guess, to, to the public or Rudy Giuliani, the guy at the computer shop. They had it. They were looking at, oh, no, by the way, they're looking at some tax evasion. He's probably going to be prosecuted for that. Making false statements on a federal uh, application for a gun that he bought. But yet, when I look at even those charges, man, that you, you know, when you bring up Hunter Biden, that is the tip of the iceberg of what's in that computer. So it even seems like me, if they're going to prosecute him, it's because, oh, man, we got caught. We have no choice. But uh, let's give him, like, he paid back the taxes, no, to tax evasion, and, and filling out a false claim on a federal form. When we've got corruption, kickbacks, illegal schemes, all emanating from that computer, not, all, not, not to mention horrible pictures, graphic pictures, and he's going to get a slap on the wrist because he filled out the form that you all fill out when you want to buy a handgun and says, I'm not illegal. I'm not addicted to drugs. <laughs> Give me a break. Can I ask you a question? Sure. And I, I truly don't know the answer to this, but it, off subject a little bit, but same kind of point about narratives and things of that nature. The left made, along with Joe Biden and the FBI and all that, made all this big hoopla when they raided Donald Trump's house down in South Florida, Mar-a-Lago. Right. My first thing was, okay, if somebody's going to pull the trigger on something like that against a former president, they must have some 
really bad. Somebody's going to go to jail pretty quickly. Yeah. Over this, especially as as election times coming up and midterms and all that. Uh, what what? Last I have heard, Donald Trump is not yet in jail. No. So what what did? You know, and I'm sorry to throw this on you because I know we haven't researched it or did, but to your best of your knowledge what is going on with all that okay now, actually I, I read the newspaper every day so i can tell you first of all the press was like we finally got him we got him finally so what it seems like well there was a report that you know the lawyer that said yeah all the documents are out may have had a miscommunication but what you're really seeing now is a special master reviewing the documents a special master is a third party that comes in and says, okay, these were the documents you seized. This was what's the stuff you took. I'm going to review it for sensitivity, whether it's top secret, very top secret, exceptionally top secret, or whether it should even be given back to the president. Only to investigate the documents themselves and also have each side make a, a, a pitch on why this is not top secret or why I just classified this or why it is. So at this point in time, nothing has really happened that the Democrats and the liberal media wanted to have happen to Donald Trump. The reason why he got the raid on Mar-a-Lago is because they couldn't impeach him. And they fear him. Biden fears him more than anybody else in the next They're really trying election. to either make him, force him, or dirty him up or continue to dirty him up in, in, in hopes that he will not run for president again. Is that Absolutely. Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's who, But so far, nothing. I mean, you've seen in New York, they've sued him civilly for overestimating the values of his properties on loan documents. Man, that, that, that prosecutor promised, that AG promised, we're going to, that I'm going to get in office, I'm going to prosecute Donald Trump. Well, now she just sued him civilly. But they are out to get him, man. I mean, just totally out to get him. I mean, they're not even, they're not even being subtle at this point with him. But what you see is... Every time they go, I got him, we got him, we got him, they don't got him. The report just came out, just came out, that the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the FBI, the vaunted FBI, offered the author of the Steele dossier a million dollars if he could prove anything in that piece of crap that they pushed during the election and afterwards to try to impeach him, the Steele dossier. They said, Mr. Steele, if you can prove and corroborate anything in this dossier, we'll give you a million bucks of government money collected by the taxpayer. And guess what? Christopher Steele could not corroborate one thing in that. Not one. Not one. But how many years did we hear Russia, 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 Russia gate, Russia? You know, he's in bed with Russia. Turns out, based on a false document generated by Hillary Clinton's campaign. But our own government was willing to try to make it so by offering a million dollars to the author to try to prove something. Well, that proved out to be a dud. And now January 6th is a dud, except we're keeping people in prison for a long time for things that we didn't even charge people with for bombing a federal courthouse in Oregon. Um, don't have as much experience at it as Donald Trump does, but I'm involved in a lawsuit right now. Really? And I kind of somewhat, sort of, kind of underhanded got offered a million dollars. You sort of kind of did, yeah. <laughs> you did. Yeah. But you still don't... Hey, looking at me. He don't like the way I'm moving oh, the microphone. He's holding the microphone. I bet if I do this. <laughs> that's that's one of your favorite things to do. Yeah. No, it's, it's amazing to me that the government will go to such ends because it fears the one thing, the one person that says, I'm going to expose the swamp in the deep state, and we're going to get rid of it. Because what's it showing is this inorganic monster that has grown out of our republic is a federal government system that is too powerful, too corrupt to maintain a democratic state, a free state, a free market economy. Because too many hands are in the cookie jar getting the goods already. And I, I fear that unless we as a people just say, hey, look, we, we are... We let you govern us at the consent of the governed. We've got to change the way that we're going to handle our government, how our, our government's going to handle us. And that's not revolutionary talk. That's not civil war talk. That is because a government of the people, by the people, for the people, just like Tulsi Gabbard said, should be able to dictate the course of the future of that government, period. Moral of the story is 
from local level to state level, which we're involved in mostly, federal level, the media is could be doing such a much better job informing people about what's going on, yeah. and they don't. And that was their job. That is their job. Used to be, I mean, even the Watergate scandal, you know, that was good journalism against Richard Nixon. The Pentagon Papers. There's there's a lot there. I mean, history is replete with good journalism on keeping the government honest. Now we're seeing journalism that allows the government to be dishonest. You know, back in the day in the 1900s, we had the muckrackers, you know, the the newspapers that were powerful and that would write stories to harm politicians or, to, or they'd be paid to not write a story, to write a story favorable, whatever. Now we have just another arm of a liberal government that seeks to take your power and your freedom away as a citizen invested in the institution itself and that you are subject to the will of that institution and you have a press that is complicit to the point where some guy named David Levitt thinks he is so powerful that because Tina Ramirez, a Virginia State Senate candidate, said, I teach my daughter about Columbus Day, that she should be separated from her child. Reported, not just reported for child abuse, then have it investigated to be found to be abused and neglected, get court intervention, a child in need of services, we call that a chins petition here in Virginia, and then to have her child taken away from her and put into foster care because she dared utter the words, Christopher Columbus. Well, happy Columbus Day, everybody. That's my Leaning Right moment brought to you by Charlie's Waterfront Cafe in beautiful Farmville, Virginia. Go get some great food. Say hi to Tommy Graziano, my good friend. He's got a great place down there. You won't regret it. Right next door to the Greenfront Furniture Warehouse. That's it. That's my Leaning Right. And I, I think that was faster than most of them, right? No. So well, I, I, no. I drug you down a couple rabbit holes. Um, I never mind. That. You ready to turn left? Let's turn left. Before we turn left, I would like to remind everybody that leaning right and turning left with Sadler and the Senator is powered by Pacematic. We want to thank Pacematic for the platform that they give us with this podcast and Sadler Stanley Racing to uh, keep things that are important to us and we think important to to people in general. Uh, keep it on the forefront. Keep talking about them. Pacematic develops gaming software that players love to play and can use their skills to win every single time. They've also been very helpful to convenience stores, truck stops, restaurants, and bars, especially across the Commonwealth of Virginia. And through our lawsuit, they've been continued to be able to operate these games during a pandemic. And it's really been, been a godsend to a lot of these businesses to keep the doors open, be able to hire people, be able to invest in infrastructure and other things uh, during during a very trying time business-wise, uh, not to mention leftover and continuing effects uh, of the pandemic. So thanks to Pacematic for everything they've been doing and, and especially giving us this platform with the podcast. Now, turning left, you know, we had a busy race weekend. The Sadler Stanley Racing Team was in Hickory, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. A lot of drama also at Charlotte Motor Speedway. There was. Uh, in the NASCAR races. Yeah. But before I get to that, I've got to mention that the sponsor of my turning left moment is none other than Laura Stanley with Vista Installations, who, by the way, she had a big crowd Huge. down at Hickory Motor Speedway over the weekend, entertaining guests from uh, her customers and some of her manufacturers and partners through Vista Installations. They had two suites full of people. Full of people. At Hickory Motor Speedway. Full of people, full of beer, full of food. And it was great. I mean, we we met all of them. Yeah. You being the, you know, that she's your sponsor, went in yeah. there and and uh, shook hands and took pictures and signed autographs. That was great. I appreciate that. And I went in there as a politician, met every single person. But there was like 70 people out there, most of whom either from Lowe's or their installers even, who had never seen a race before, let alone an open wheel modified race, let alone at the historic Hickory track. So everybody had a good time. Food was good. Fellowship was good. All that. But Laura Stanley with Vista Installations. A very well accomplished window and door installation company, but more importantly, she's been babysitting <laughs> a politician slash trial attorney for well over twelve years. Yes, yes, I need a change in. 
<laughs> I'm hungry. I so what do you want to talk about first? You want to talk about NASCAR first or you want to talk about Hickory first? Let's talk about Hickory. Oh, frustrating. Frustrating day at Hickory. It's a neat track, though. It's a great track. Right off the highway. Now, camping was a little bit tough. We were right against the highway. Now, you were supposed to have I, I over, was told, over deck, you know, the uh, up on the hill. I was told I would have good looking. Overseeing the entire race. You could, you could have watched the race from your campsite. Yeah. Uh, that didn't happen. Yeah. I was uh, about 15 paces off the you highway. You couldn't have been any further away from the track. I was just about at the furthest point. You were in the highway. I was. I was. In fact, um, if you ever want to take a knapsack or and a, and a sleeping bag and go sleep on the side of a highway, uh, that was what it kind of felt like um, in terms of noise. In terms of noise. But it was still a good time. Uh, I he- mean, my wife was there. My son, my nephew, Griffin was there. My son Chandler was there. My in-laws were there. They were, they had a great time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, and her ge- and her manager of her business was there with her husband. We had a good time. We had three campers out there. We had a really good time. Except my hydraulics didn't work. Does that happen? On the motorhome? Yeah. Brand new. You need to clarify what you're talking about. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Those two. Yeah. Oh, the LCI, the, the uh, automatic uh, uh, the leveling, device. leveling device. Yes. The jacks. That that's yeah. it. Yeah, they didn't work. It didn't turn on. Yeah, I mean, is that normal? No, I mean, Aaron Arnold of Camping World, my my leveling devices did not work the third trip out. Well, let's just hope you didn't get a lemon. Hopefully, they'll get them fixed for you, and it won't be something else. Well, you're making me feel next good. week. Appreciate that. But yeah, so that was the only real hiccup I had. But otherwise, we had a great time camping and uh, enjoyed well, ourselves. The same cannot be said for Saddle Stanley Racing. No, um, but talk about. The roller coaster ride of professional stock car racing. Remember the old wide world of sports days, the thrill of victory and the, the agony, agony of, of defeat. defeat. Bum, 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 bum. We had all of that in a matter of moments. Yes. To make a long story short, for the most part, the day went really good and smooth for our two teams. Remember, we had Jonathan Brown in the 22. Uh, we were trying to get him into the top three in points to have a chance to race for a championship at Motor Mile in a couple of weeks. And then. We finally got to run Jonathan Cash, who is yeah. a longtime friend of mine, who is uh, his business is P&P Speed Shop. He owns a karting shop that uh, he sells premier racing chassis, uh, uh, the, the carts that I build. Your company. Yeah. Yes. He's one of my distributors for premier racing chassis. He also uh, builds and sells karting engines to customers all over the country. Uh, got a really big business right there in uh, Oxford, North Carolina. But back in his day, he, he was um, quite an accomplished uh, late model stock car racer as well. So the original plan was to have Jonathan Cash race as a teammate to Jonathan Brown back a couple months ago in Orange County Speedway because that was a track that Jonathan Cash had a lot of experience on. In fact, we even went and tested there, and the test went great. Then that got rained out. Then we went to, okay, we'll take Jonathan to Motor Mile. That got rained out. Yep. So the, really the last opportunity we would have had because of scheduling things of that nature with Saddler Stanley Racing was this past Saturday night at Hickory. So we carried Jonathan Cash, who had never driven an open-wheel modified before in a race and had never seen nor turned a lap at Hickory Motor Speedway. And he was top five in every practice session. He was top five in qualifying. Yeah. And he ran top five just about the entire night, other than right after he came down for a pit stop, got back on the track, then quickly drove back up to fifth, sixth position, pretty much ran there the entire race, never put a scratch on the car, no. never bumped a single car never front, touched back, never touched a soul. All clean passes. And he's impressive to watch. With about five laps to go, there was – another in the long line of too many cautions Mm -hmm. that came out in that race. They re-racked the field. Uh, Green flag falls going in turn three, and another driver just dive bombs the corner and and runs over. Jonathan Cash puts him into the fence and does a significant amount of damage to to our car uh, as far as that one. Uh, Jonathan Brown, at the same time, did not qualify very well, but some of that's on purpose sometimes. Um, Hickory is a racetrack that's really tough on tires. It wears tires out fast. So one of the strategies that teams em- implore sometimes is instead of trying to go out and see how fast you can run in qualifying, 
some of the drivers save the car, save the tires, run, say, 80 85% uh, throttle, you know, or as far as if, if 100% is hard as you can go, run 75 80%. Uh, in qualifying as to not spin the tires in qualifying. When you spin the tires on an abrasive track like Hickory, it um, it really hurts the tire. So Jonathan started uh, a little bit further back in the field, like 16th, 17th, right in there. Right. But pretty quickly in the race, he drove up mm-hmm. inside the top 10. Two fast cars. But to go with the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat, with 10 laps to go, our cars were second and fourth. Mm-hmm. Oh, and it looked good. We, my uh, son was excited. Chandler and my nephew Griffin were excited. Jonathan Brown actually got out front and led a little bit. Yep. And uh, we had two cars in the top five, and that's where we should have finished. But uh, Yeah, because Matt Hirschman was running the race, and he just seems to run away from all of us. Yeah, he's um, he's the class of the field right now. Uh, uh, our teams and others have got to go to work to try to close that gap to make, uh, make the 60 work for it. If he's going to win it, he's got to work for it a little yeah. bit. Um, so with five laps to go, the, uh, our car gets crashed and on the restart, I think prior to that, uh, the smart series decided, uh, to black flag Jonathan Brown for what they viewed as a, a restart violation. So and explain that. I mean, you know, for the racing novice out there, and it was hard for me to explain to my 11 year old boy Chandler. You get into, you come out of turn three into turn four, and there's a restart zone. Walk us through what happened. Why well, they why big, they said we had to go to the back? There are restart the left, zones. I think. The I don't track. think I don't know if we had a specific restart zone painted at Hickory like you would see at a big track, say at Charlotte or whatever. But there was an area that they were a, a place on the track where race control was 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 in their mind viewing as the restart zone and that's when the uh pace car comes off the lights pace car off. comes off turn four the the field of cars drives past the entrance to pit road until they get to the quote unquote restart zone and then anytime in that zone the field of cars can go but they, they want the leader of the race to break first huh. so the leader is has to get on the gas first then everybody else falls in the issue that I had personally with that call being made was the cars had not consistently gone in that zone every time. And number two, in this particular case, which it's, you know, Matt Hirschman is a, is a veteran racer. Mm-hmm. Jonathan Brown is a veteran racer, but sometimes their games being played. So it looked like to me, that the 60 of Hirschman stomped the gas like he was going to go and then hit the brake again. Dog the restart. To force or encourage or entice the outside front guy to jump. Which was our guy. Which was our guy. And so our guy did jump based on if you just look at it and don't pay attention to what's going on inside the cars, it looks like our guy went probably 30 car lengths too early. But knowing that the 60 had decided not to go, our guy let back up let off the gas to let the field catch back up. And I would have thought because other drivers got warnings and other things during the course of the race that maybe we, we would have gotten a warning and kept going, but they made the call, put him in the rear. Um, Which was what place like 20, wasn't it? Uh, at least outside the top 20. Yeah. Uh, with a handful of laps to go, maybe 10. Yeah. And, and uh, Jonathan Brown did a great job, not only passing cars, but unfortunately, some of the other cautions we got, including including the one when the 39 car got mangled, it enabled uh, Jonathan to make up some ground. He drove back up to seventh place. Uh, seventh place from from the back. From the back, back with 10 laps to go. So that was a good job by him and the I team. I mean, what does that tell you, though? I mean, it's a, so to me, Hirschman had jumped the restart, in my opinion, before. Like well, at he, the beginning of the race. He jumped the initial start. Yeah, at the beginning of the race. He came by the start-finish line 15 call lengths ahead of the second-place guy to but start he, the race. he didn't get put to the back. He did not. And so, and was, there was a warning given at the drivers' meeting. What? What kind of warning? That basically there would be no shenanigans on restarts, and the warning at the drivers' meeting was supposed to be the warning everybody got the before only the warning. race started. So everybody this was supposed to warning. be penalized, right? But then I think it happened another time. Before, allegedly, 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 uh, there there were two cars that allegedly had some type of warning. 
uh, given to them about behaviors on a restart after the warning that was given at the driver's meet. And in our case, uh, our driver was not offered that uh, opportunity to reset, restart, and and do it better the next time. And that was like with what? Four laps to go, something like that? Yeah, inside of 10. I mean, that changed the outcome of the race. Sure. It kind of changed the outcome of where we sit in uh, points right yeah. now. In car points right now, driver points for Jonathan Brown, I think we've dropped back to six, haven't we? Yeah, it's um, – well, it's not for lack of effort. Our guys are working hard. Our cars are fast. Yeah. You know, you look at Jonathan Cash, I mean, they had a field of about 30 cars there Saturday. One of the strongest, if not the strongest field of modifieds they've had all year. And you take a guy there with a car who's never driven a modified, never been to the racetrack, and first practice on the track, he's top five. Yeah. I mean, so our cars are fast. Yeah. How old's How old's uh, Jonathan Cash? Ooh, I'm guessing, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess he's right around forty. Oh, really? Okay, because mm-hmm. he looks young. Yeah. I mean, but, but that very and, talented. And, and, and very that's talented. the kind of chances you were always talking about trying to. I always you know, wanted one of the things I talked to you car, about and Pacematic. You know, we want to put the best drivers in our cars, mm-hmm. but I'm really I have a soft spot in my heart for the karting industry because that's where me and my brother got our starts. Other drivers, Lake Speed, Jamie McMurray, a lot of other drivers I know got their starts in karting, and so I wanted to be able to find a way in a in an avenue that we can give Jonathan or, or give somebody in karting a chance to hop out of a cart, hop into an open wheel modified, and see. The transition. See if we can prove that, you know, carding is a good place to cut your teeth to come to that next step. And I just thought uh, what Jonathan Cash did all during the day, you know, the wreck wasn't his fault. He just got no. ran run over from behind. Yeah. Nothing he could have done. He did, in my view, he didn't make a mistake all day. No. And Fun to watch. Yeah. And he was digging. I mean, he was yeah. passing – and but like he passed on a track like that with ever no without ever touching another car. We we should try to give him another shot. Sometime. We need to work on. We need to. Yeah. We and, need to and, look at that. and God bless Jonathan Brown, John Boy. He was he he drove a great race too. I think he got ripped off. That's my opinion. I think he got ripped off. Yeah. All right. Um, you know, and especially when you're talking about you know this is the last three race uh, races for the championship mm-hmm. where points mean everything. And it did transform and change the outcome of the race, which also transformed and changed the outcome of the point standings. Makes it a little harder for us. We've got two races left. Uh, we've got Tri-County. You going to that race? No, no. Not not, not Tri-County this weekend, but I, I am I going to uh, Moda Mile the following weekend for the series finale. Okay, so we're both doing that. Yeah. You're going to – yeah. So that, that that's great. We get to see the finale together. You but and now, I – you and I have – an event on Friday night with some small business owners that are kind of a part of our skill game. Fight. That's right. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. Now let me let me ask you this. We had also pledged that whatever winnings, purse winnings, Jonathan Cash had obtained through his run into the race, we we're going to donate those to the Beasley family. Clearly we finished what, seventeenth or something? The purse money the car generated was five hundred bucks. Okay. So Well wait a minute. Shouldn't we do a little better? Well, five hundred bucks. So we're gonna donate the five hundred to car one. I'm throwing in five hundred. You're throwing in five hundred. Yep. Uh, a friend of ours, the Jonathan and I named Dan Leggett's throwing in five hundred. And Jeff Edwards, a guy who actually whose kid races for Jonathan Cash, called and was throwing in five hundred. So we're gonna end up sending twenty five hundred bucks okay. to uh, the family of Chris Beasley to help them offset um, the cost associated with medical bills and or uh, services and things of that nature for Chris Beasley. So Okay, well, let's round it up. Stanley Law Group is going to make it an even three. Okay? okay great. Because he should have finished higher. Sure. Um, and, in fact, uh, it was Bobby Miesmer that wrecked us. He was. And I'm, I'm to understand Bobby Miesmer has run in the race, uh, the Smart Series races before, um, but I'm hearing, he, I'm hearing he's not coming back. He may not be coming back. I don't know. So supposedly he has to pay for the wreck equipment. Should I say... I don't know, and let me finish by saying I don't care. Gotcha. Well, uh, that's fantastic. Um, so anybody, overall, you know, we 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 didn't get the finishes we probably deserved or were hoping for, but ultimately we gave Jonathan Cash a great opportunity. In my view, even though the finishing results don't really show it, 
he capitalized on that opportunity and showed himself very well all day long. Yeah. Uh, our team, uh, Jonathan Brown, all our mechanics, engineers, everybody on Saddler Stanley Racing was very complimentary of not only what he did on the racetrack, but just as importantly, Phil Stefanelli told me he couldn't remember how long it had been since a driver like that stayed after and loaded the cars and shit up in the trailer. Really? He stayed and helped him because the car was in yeah. bad shape. He helped him get the car in shape to put it in the trailer and, and stay there until the the car was loaded and the trailer was locked and ready to come home. Now, I went down to the pits after the race. I was a little hot, a little mad. Yeah. But there he was with the car the whole time and couldn't have been happier. Yeah. I mean, didn't like the result, but was just happy for the opportunity. And the, the team, we were a little upset for him. Um, yeah. We were a lot upset. Well, you just hate to see a – I mean, the guy – and look, it was a multitude of things happening at one time. You and I are sitting there with a booth full of customers of one of our sponsors, Vista Installations. My wife. Your wife. All these people there watching. We're trying to get into the top three to race for a championship. We're trying to give Jonathan Cash an opportunity to, to drive a modified. We're trying to raise money for the Beasley family. We've got all these things, and they're all – the stars are aligning. It was right there. And then in a two-minute span, a race official makes a judgment call that takes one of our cars out of the race and out of the championship. And then a fellow competitor just for like sixth place just runs over our guy. And it's just unnecessary. Yeah. It's just unnecessary. It was unfortunate. Um, but for me to see – Jonathan Cash out there, the way he was driving and, and acquitting himself uh, behind the wheel in a car that he never driven before, um, it, it was it was. I thought he did outstanding. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It still is always fun to watch. Always um, love being a part of the racing community. Appreciate all those drivers out there and everybody that helps them, and appreciate just hanging out with you with SSR Racing as we do what we do. And you made a comment a moment ago mm -hmm. that I don't want to the word you used, the call that the smart officials made could have changed the outcome changed of the race. Outcome. Yeah, it did. They had a bigger story about potentially trying to manipulate the outcome of a race at the Roval at Charlotte on Sunday. That's right. Now, I got to tell you, I missed uh, a lot of the races up. I put the, uh, the Xfinity race on the outdoor TV on the RV, and uh, we had – uh, Karen and Casey, Karen Tomlinson and Casey Tomlinson, they watched it on the outside. I Casey was, was jacked up. Uh, animated, wasn't he? He was into it. You were on the inside watching the North UNC game on the other TV I had in the RV. Right. And I was kind of floating back and forth between the track, uh, trying to help my wife as she was preparing and, and seeing qualifying. And so I missed a lot of that uh, race, so I really can't comment on it too much. But we didn't get home from Hickory until about 16 laps to go from the Roval, but I heard I missed nothing because all the action was in the 16 laps. But tell us what happened. So in a nutshell, Christopher Bell ended up winning the race and it advanced to the next round. He had to win or he was out. He won. So ultimately, that knocked Kyle Larson out. Larson had hit the wall earlier, broke a toe link, and he spent some time in the garage. But had a previous winner won the race, Larson would have been in. But uh, Christopher Bell won, so that knocked Larson. So he's a defending champion. Well, that makes 19 so he's new winners or first-time winners this year? Mm, Christopher Bell already won one this year. Did he? Yeah. Okay. Um, but he had to win this round of the playoffs to, gotcha. to, to, to move forward. Um, but on the last lap, Chase Briscoe, who drives for Stuart Haas Racing, mm -hmm. teammate of Kevin Harvick and Cole Custer, so Chase Briscoe had some problems. He had to come down pit road, get tires, do that. So Chase Briscoe had to pass, I don't know the exact number, but had to pass a number of cars in the final two laps to get enough points to get into the playoffs mm -hmm. to move forward. And coming down the backstretch before you get to the chicane, his teammate Cole Custer, the crew chief of that car, called into Cole Custer and said, okay, so – the crew chief is faced this way, looking at the grandstands this way. Cole Custer is on the back stretch, all the way across the infield at Charlotte Motor Speedway. The crew chief calls on the radio and says, 
bag it down. You got a flat tire, I think. Bag it down. I think you got a flat. Bag it down. And so Cole Custer slowed down. And then they kept saying, I think you got a tire of something. Bag it down. Slow down. You know, then finally, hmm. all right, come on. So in a nutshell, Cole Custer, although he didn't, it, it didn't want to admit it, he slowed down to let his teammate Chase Briscoe pass him to get a spot and or spots. Oh, like that's never happened before. So NASCAR ultimately – Find Cole Custer 50 driver points, which means nothing. He's not in the playoffs, but also find him $100,000. And they suspended the crew chief indefinitely Ooh. and find him $100,000. Indefinitely. What indefinitely. That, what, that what means, does that NASCAR speak? That means they'll revisit it this winter and decide if they want to let him come to Daytona or not. Damn. So $200,000 in fines. Was he blocking other drivers or was he just letting him? Uh, Both. Yes. Oh, was? Oh, okay. So it was <laughs> let his driver and letting his driver back. And clogging up the track for everybody else. Hmm. <laughs> I think that's – why do you have teammates if that's not what you're doing? I mean, you know, think about it. I mean, what was Dale Earnhardt doing at his very last act? He was blocking for his son and for Michael Waltrip on, at Daytona. I thought that was a part of racing. Well, they got the uh, – very clear and defined 100% rule now, you know. You have to give 100% all the time. Who wrote them? The Smart Series? <laughs> <laughs> they have some clear rules. I think we handled the Smart Series discussion very well. We don't want to go back and revisit okay. that because I won't that's behave fine. as good the second time around. Okay, that's fine. Um, <laughs> also, you know, we've talked uh, several times this year on the podcast about Tyler Reddick. Yeah. He's going to 2311 racing. So how'd that happen? Well, so he's, he's been bought out in, of a contract or let he's go? Supposed, he's supposed to go in 2024. So the next year they were going to, Richard Childress had said he was going to get an extra charter, a third charter, and just put him in another car next year, which would have been a just a disaster, mm -hmm. just running a car just because you have to. But the end result is Tyler Reddick is going to 2311 Racing starting next year because – I haven't heard specifically who bought it that yet. We may, we, may, we may not know. But what I do know is, or what is being reported, is that Tyler Reddick's contract with Richard Childress Racing for next year has been bought out. So Hermie would have paid Childress for the contract. You would think somebody with Denny Hamlin's group would have paid out the contract from from uh, RCR to get to release Tyler Reddick so he could go drive for 2311 next year. So what car does he run? Does that mean basically that uh, Kurt Busch is done? That's what it means to me. Now, there's been no announcement to that effect, but that's what it means to me. Hmm. That'd be sad. It'd be sad. It's a sad way to let go of a great career, kind of that way. I hope that's not it. Me, but me too. That's what you would think yeah. when if they would have been, been that aggressive to make that move to buy out I mean, buying out a contract, who knows what that figure is, exactly. $15 million in that neighborhood, I would guess. And then go have to rent a charter themselves for a third car. And then, you know, spend that extra money for another team at 2311 and all mm -hmm. that. So my my gut, and I hope I'm wrong, my gut tells me that maybe our Kurt Busch may be stepping away or maybe cutting back. God, we'll have to wait and see. I hate to hear that. Yeah. Because he was having a great year, too. Oh, yeah, he won early this year at Kansas. And what do they do? Have you have you heard anything updated on on the fixes to the car that you talked about in the last week's podcast? If you haven't listened to last week's podcast, great podcast. Listen to Hermie's take on on what's the matter with the car and how do you fix it. I don't know all the engineering fixes they did, but I do know that there was a crash, a series of crash tests done in controlled environments uh, over the last two weeks, and that NASCAR says they have a fix for the rear bumper area of the cars, and it would be implemented on the cars this offseason. Hmm. No more specifics than that. That's, I mean, that's all I know. I don't know okay. really what they changed, how they changed it, uh, what the data is, what the figures are, but I have been told that there there is a there is an update and a fix in NASCAR's view, and I expect those changes and, and updates to be, to be made this offseason. Well, looking at the uh, back end of the 39 of the Sadler-Stanley race team car, can we take the old parts that they don't want that made that back end for the next gen car harder and put it in the back fixed. bars? You see me to see the picture I sent you? No. It's fixed? I sent you a picture this morning. You kidding me? No. 
I did not look. I'm I'm focused totally on you. I was in court this morning. Then, ever since you got here, after I got back from court, I've been focused on you. So I have not looked at my text messages. But that's good to know. So it's ready for. We've got it coming up on October 24th, after Motor Mile. Mm, there you go. It is fixed. Oh, that's it's all torn down, but it's, well, it's got to be fixed. But the rear clip is on it. That's great. But we've got Ryan Newman. Driving 39. Which, by the way, why did you think it was appropriate for you to send me a picture of our crashed car like the next day? <laughs> I mean, how was that going to help matters I, at all? I, I knew what the car looked like. I was poking the bear. Okay. Why? And I mean, why? Because aren't we teammates? Yeah, we are. We're brothers. Okay. So why poke me? Well, because I just said just to make your day even greater, I sent you a picture of the car. I didn't know that you'd seen the back of the car. Because actually, those are the pictures You're I took when I was the question. in the Those are the pictures I took when I was in the pits what about after the race. that? Pictures was going to make my day better. Uh, nothing. So you're just being Bill. No, you, know, you do I, own this car with me together. Yeah, yeah. No, I get that. I was commiserating with you. So we, no, you weren't. I was. No, you weren't. Do I have to go back and read the text? I was commiserating with you. I was. From now on, commiserate. So I was not sticking it to you. I wasn't trying to stick it to you or just tease you. Okay. So commiserate without you. Yeah. Okay, fine. I can, fine, I can fine. commiserate fine, I enough share. on my own. That's fine. I won't share anymore. Chad, anything you want to add to this stellar broadcast? <laughs> I, think so. I think it came in a little bit better than the one we did in my RV at well, the Hickory Motor Speedway. So uh, this weekend coming up, Tri County. The what's the next? What's the fancy word for next to last? Penultimate. I don't know. Penultimate. Do you know? Chad, you're yeah, the guy look that, that word. Look that word up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's two races left in the Smart Series. <laughs> This year, Tri County, and then uh, Motor Mile uh, the following weekend. Do you ever race Tri County? No, I've never been there either, and I'm not going to make it this time. I've got to make a speech in Carroll County. What is that? Penultimate. What does it mean? Define penultimate. Last, well, well, yeah. last but one in a series of things. Second last. Second. Okay. See, look at you, big guy. I tell you what, fancy, fancy words. I just don't know how smart I'm going to get. Damn. I wish. I wish I was. You so know, tell, when I grow up, I want to be just tell like Tell our, uh, our uh, listeners about our guest coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to love the interview. Very compelling, very poignant. I am sure of it, even though we've not interviewed her yet. Erica Porter, Jungle Girl. Say that again. Say it the way you did it. Jungle Girl. Jungle Girl from the Women of Wrestling Wow is coming up next to tell her story, her life, and what she's doing to make life better. So we're going to take a commercial break right now. I'm Virginia State Senator Bill Stanley, and I am leaning right. I'm Hermie Sadler, and I'm turning left. We'll be right back with Erica Porter. Hi, folks. This is Hermie Sadler. Thanks for listening to our all-new podcast, Leaning Right and Turning Left with Sadler and the Senator. I hope you are enjoying the show as much as Senator Stanley and I enjoy bringing it to you. Whether you're a family traveling together or a truck driver hauling freight up and down the highway, I hope you will take the time to visit one of our Sadler Travel Plaza locations in Virginia and North Carolina. Sadler Travel Plaza locations are licensed dealer locations for pilot travel centers. And we also carry Shell Motiva petroleum products for our four-wheel friends. We pride ourselves on providing one-stop shopping for service, food, and entertainment. Our food options include Five Guys Burgers and Fries, Quiznos, Dairy Queen, Hermie Sadler's Faux Show Bar and Grill, Victory Lane Restaurant, Hunt Brothers Pizza, Dunkin' Donuts, and much, much more. Our locations include Sadler Travel Plaza in South Hill, located off I-85 at Exit 12. The Sadler Travel Plaza of Emporia, which is conveniently located on Exit 11B off I-95. And Sadler Travel Plaza on Highway 58 in Suffolk. We also have our North Carolina location, Sadler Travel Plaza in Dunn, North Carolina. That's Exit 75 off I-95. We appreciate all of our customers. And Bill and I appreciate you listening to Leaning Right and Turning Left with Sadler and the Senator, powered by Pace of Madden. 
Hey, this is Bill Stanley, Hermie Sadler's sidekick on this podcast. When I'm not in Richmond at the Capitol or doing this podcast, my real job for the past 27 years is as a trial attorney with the Stanley Law Group. Here at the Stanley Law Group, we represent our clients in every courthouse in the Commonwealth. No problem is too small for us to solve. No case is too big for us to win. Whether it's criminal charges, traffic offenses, civil disputes, litigation matters of any sort, we handle it all. We make sure that we treat every client like family because they are to us. Your problem is our problem. Your success is our success because we hate to lose more than we love to win. And believe me, we win a lot. Don't believe me? Go ask Hermie. I'm his favorite lawyer and he hates lawyers. So give us a call at 540-721-6028 and let us help you. Or visit our website at www.vastanleylawgroup.com. That's www.vastanleylawgroup.com. At the Stanley Law Group, we'll make sure we're the lawyers that you swear by and not at. And we're back. I'm Virginia State Senator Bill Stanley. I've got a complex after listening to Hermie Sadler while we were off the air, and I'm leaning right. And I'm former NASCAR driver and Fox Sports analyst Hermie Sadler, and I'm turning left, leaning right and turning left with Sadler and the Senator, powered by Pacemet. All right, we're back in. We have a very special guest today with us. I think it's going to be a wonderful interview. Uh, we're so happy to have you here with us. Uh, she's had to put up with about 20 minutes of us going back and forth and I think she thinks we hate each other, but this is how we love, how me and Hermie love each other. We make fun of each She's other. She's involved in the wrestling in industry. She understands heels and baby faces just fine. <laughs> okay, whatever that means. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the program. Erica Porter, a.k.a. Jungle Girl. Yes. Jungle you have Girl. emphasis on the girl. A, a international in champion. There. Yeah, UPW, women's champion in Ultimate Pro Wrestling. Women of Wrestling, wow, world champion. Wow, welcome to the program. Wow. Thanks. Yeah. Wow. Indeed. I don't mess around. Erica, um, you're from Richmond or you're living here in Richmond. Is that right? I live here in Richmond. I am from the Baltimore, Washington area. Oh, she's a Baltimore girl. Very I'm nice. A Baltimore girl. Well, we, we love having her. We're here at the uh, high atop the Stanley Law Group skyscraper in the Stanley Law Group conference room, which is now the Stanley Law Group, leaning right and turning left with Sadler and the Senator Studio. And you've got a lot of great things going on right now. We want to talk to you today about your career. All about you. Find out all that we can about you. Talk about a, an important event that's coming up and what you've been fighting. Uh, we're even going to talk about uh, you've created this thing called the endorphism community. So you want to say it like you don't want to say it. Endorphasm. Endorphasm. The Endorphasm Foundation. I think I just had an endorphasm. There you go. What do you think of that? Asm is the root while, of I... anything intense. So it's a intense endorphin rush. Okay. All right. Parents, take your kids outside. Don't listen to this podcast, but ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Erica, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you grew up, how you got into wrestling. Let's talk about all the fun things. Oh, man. So that's uh, that's going way back. 22 years ago is how I got into wrestling. So I, uh, I grew up competitive in everything that I did and had moved out to California, was living in California, was working as a personal trainer for years and years. And had different friends that were telling me that there was a show that they were looking for athletic women for a superhero show. And I wasn't interested. And then when by the time second, third person mentioned the show, I went for the audition. And so this was in Marina Del Rey, California. I walked up and it was every kind of Pam Anderson lookalike that you could possibly imagine. And so I looked at everybody, said, I'm definitely in the wrong place. And I turned around to leave. And a producer from the show came up and was like, you're not going to want to leave. So I stay. We go into this conference center and we learn that it's actually wrestling. At the time, I had a friend that was wrestling with WWE. Uh, he was wrestling with, uh, it was Tess and Albert. So Matt Bloom. Matt Bloom. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. Matt Bloom heads up now the WWE training center. Matt Bloom used to go bear hunt with me in Bellhaven, North Carolina. <laughs> Yearly, uh, him, Andrew Martin. You're talking about test, yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, bear hunting or bear yeah, naked he passed hunting. away. Unfortunately, he passed away. <laughs> he did but pass away. Matt Bloom, uh, was bigger than any bear you would ever want to see. The funny thing about him, great guy, he's a great guy, a very good him. friend. Probably not, yeah, B probably. You had to kill judge. the bear, so what, but he loved to go hunting. We had a great time. He is a great, days. a great dude. Imagine this, and I know Matt Bloom, uh, big boss man. 
Ron Simmons and John Layfield were all on a hunting trip, a, a bear hunt trip together with me back maybe 2001, 2002, right in there. Talking about a, a crowd. Did you confuse Matt for the bear? Yes. Because he's a hairy he's man. A, he's, he's, he's a, but, a big hairy man. But to your point, great, great guy. Great dude. Yeah. Do you leave out picnic baskets to lure the bears? No, we just turn the dog loose and run them up a tree. Go. Oh, that sounds really fair. This is not what this show is supposed to be about. <laughs> well, it's quickly becoming that. Yeah. You tree a bear. She's going to have a hard time. tree a bear. Oh, no, I won't. I am still She's going to have a hard time talking about anybody in wrestling that I don't know. Yeah, but you, you tree a bear. I mean, I, I know we tree raccoons down where I'm at, but bears? Down in Bellhaven, North Carolina, with my friend Don Cox. Uh, they, it's a big thing down there. They turn dogs loose and run the bear up the tree. Yes. So how many bears did you get? Um, I know the first day we were there, uh, John Layfield, Bradshaw, as he was called back yeah. in the day, he killed a bear and big boss man, bless his heart. He, uh, he killed one too. And speaking of killing, uh, Bradshaw also killed my brand new Yukon. <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. There's a story behind that. <laughs> yeah, there is. I'd like to hear yeah, that. We, gotta we told you this is how the yeah. how the thing goes. You just got to work with us. We'll get back to you in a second. Yeah. I'm I'm totally cool <laughs> with it. Well, John decided uh, after the party and things, one of the nights we were there, that he needed to run to the store or run somewhere, and we were all we actually taken a bus. Ironically enough, Monday Night Raw was in Baltimore. And we took uh, one of my friend's tour bus and went to Baltimore. And after Monday Night Raw, p picked up all these guys. And Steve Austin was on the it was a bunch of them. And we all drove from Baltimore during the middle of the night to, to the coast of North Carolina to hunt. But maybe the second or third night, uh, John decides he needs to go somewhere and gets in. It was my wife's Yukon, but I had someone take it to the hunt. Had all our guns and stuff in it and things we'd already carried ahead to the hunt. Well, he goes out, goes wherever. He comes back. We're staying on a, in, a, in a lodge on the Intercoastal Waterway down in North Carolina. And you come down the road toward the lodge, any sane person, and I'm getting to, to John is not sane, the signs say <laughs> road ends 1,500 feet, road oh, ends no. 1,000 feet, road ends 500 feet. He missed the turn to the hunting lodge and drove through a concrete barrier into right up the my truck was the right front tire was underneath his seat and he was uh like teetering over top of the intercoastal waterway Whoa. in my yukon so he gets out oh, no. walks back down the road comes to the hunt lodge and goes upstairs and goes to bed <laughs> <laughs> so the next morning when i wake up everybody's like hermie are you all right are you all right i'm like what do you mean am i all right so I learned shortly after John decides to wake up, he says, yeah, I missed a turn and ran your Yukon into a cement uh, bridge right to Intercoastal Water. But don't worry about it. I'm going to buy I'll buy you another one. I went, That's fine. Well, where is it? <laughs> it's still down there. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to get it towed and brought in. My wife was tickled to death, as you can imagine. So when you got home, did your wife, you know, release the dogs and treat you <laughs> <laughs> for that? I mean, yeah. Wow. Yeah. What a great story. Yeah. So this story has nothing story. to do with Jungle Girl. Well, it kind of does, indirectly. It's kind of like, you know, the six degrees of separation, that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so it all ties know. together. Yeah. And, it all ties and, together. By the way, we have her husband, Carlo, here, yes, sir. which is the, the head of endorphasm land, right? He's like the <laughs> I don't know about that. benevolent dictator, <laughs> uh, the grand potentate. Yeah, yeah, all those well, things. That's right. All those yeah, things. That's right. Keep yeah. it coming. Stop it some more. Yes. Well, welcome. Thank welcome, you. grand leader. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, grand Poopa. I, I mean to interrupt. Can you tell us about your start into wrestling in your career? <laughs> So I'll you circle stories back to Matt have Bloom. You ever, have you ever wrecked anybody's vehicle and just... Wait, she's a wrestler? I, I, uh, I might have. I don't remember. Yeah. I probably... Well, John didn't remember have, either. ...have left a vehicle or two someplace on a concrete barrier. And one of the most amazing things in history <laughs> is the fact that John somehow ended up on Fox News all these years later. Oh, really? He does a segment on Neil Cavuto. Who is this? What does he do on? He does. What gives, is his gives, show? Gives um, 
his um, opinion. Like stock opinions oh. and, and financial oh, look advice. At that. And those Fancy kind of that. <laughs> and the car market. And Did I've he got say, a, don't buy a new a, car? It's yeah, not worth it. I've got, a pic- I've got a picture of him on my phone that I know y'all don't want to see of him <laughs> riding my four wheeling naked behind my house. Is that the one where your mom had the problem with it? Yeah. Mom came to me. <laughs> the caterer showed up to the party. <laughs> And and they're taking the food inside the barn for the party, and John's down there with nothing on but cowboy boots and a blaze orange hat, nothing else on, and it's five degrees. Shrinkage. <laughs> anyway, so my mom of comes up and boots. says, "Hermie, your friends, I, I, I just don't understand." And I'm like, "Mom, <laughs> I don't understand either." <laughs> but don't worry about it. I've been watching but your friends for twenty minutes it. straight, and I just don't understand. <laughs> I just don't understand why he can't put his clothes on. I said, I've been trying for 10 years to very hot, keep his Mom. clothes on. He's very so, hot. So you're at this audition. <laughs> I'm, at the, I'm at the audition. So Matt Bloom was was in uh, WWE, and for years, he and I went to college together, but we used to all, like, wrestle around. All the pit football players, myself, had a great time. And he's like, Erica, this is right up your alley, way before I had gone to the audition. So when I went in and learned that it was wrestling, I was like, I called him immediately, and I was like, dude. I just auditioned for an all women's wrestling federation. And he's, you know, didn't really know anything about it at the time. There was nothing to be known at the time. It was Glow prior. So this was David McLean who had started Glow back in the 80s. And this was like his revamp of Glow. So I got a call. He and I had started dating. Carlo and I started dating two years prior to this. So when I told him, I got a call. About a month later, I had forgotten about it. I get a call from David McLean, and he's like, Erica Porter, yes, we'd like you to be one of our wrestlers. And I said, okay, well, what, what does this entail? What does it mean? So he goes, I need you to be at practice every single day. We're going to turn you into a wrestler. I was like, I am game. So I tell Carlo, I'm like, hey, I'm going to wrestle professionally. To which he replied, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. I'm not going to date a wrestler. That's a true story. To which I replied, it's been great knowing you. Have a great life. Completely called my bluff. <laughs> yeah, that was a bluff. That was yeah. good, though. Nice try. I noticed you're still hanging around. Yeah. Yeah. Still hanging around. Became I'm like, gonna I'm going to marry her. That's so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we ended up, I mean, the training was intense. It was great. I was sore all over. I had bruises all over. But it was the most exhilarating thing that I'd ever done. And the training was intense. But so they took basically how we acted in the ring initially, which I was climbing up the turnbuckles with throw myself with just, you know, like leaps of faith. So he, you know, McLean says to me, you're a jungle girl. Like, would you be willing to jump off the turnbuckle into the crowd? I was like, hell yeah, I will. So Carla went to the first show and quickly became like the biggest fan. Mm -hmm. Tailgating, posters, Good move. But there yeah. was course, also you, you started at you started at five grand a night, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good move though, Carlin. Yeah, we had a so great this time. was in the L.A. Forum. So at the time, we're in the L.A. Forum, we're performing. So he gets up to the VIP room in the, in the L.A. Forum, and all the girls are there, and there's you know Lakers are there, and there's all kinds of celebrities there, and so he's like. I felt like I was in a ZZ Top video. <laughs> it was this unreal. Is the, this is the coolest <laughs> thing ever. I can't believe time. that I was going to leave. So that's how it all started. And for me, it was just, uh, it had combined everything that I loved. It combined just, I like to be the center of attention. I, I enjoy it. I like the entertainment. I like the athleticism. I liked all of it. And all together, it was just like, it spoke my love language. And WOW had kind of ended at a period of time. And so that's when I pursued UPW. And so I went into the, the indie arena and traveled all over the place, was in Arizona, went and performed for the troops out in Korea and Guam. And just, uh, it's been great. You know, it's one of those things where I can't imagine my life not being a professional wrestler. It just speaks to my you know, soul. It's something about that profession, you know, and I tell jokes and got great stories and all that, but some of my best friends still to this day or in the professional wrestling industry, it's just a hell of a fraternity of people. It is. You know, and look, they're all 
crazy in certain ways and you know misfits in certain ways and you kind of have to be i could tell yeah no <laughs> no, no question tell me about it but I, I tell my wife you know we we still vacation with you know the, the matt and the hardys yeah. and their families and the Jarretts and all these but it says here ultimate pro wrestling also was the startups for guys like john cena yeah john cena and was your there. guy samoa joe yeah i wrestled with samoa joe i wrestled yeah. with uh cena i wrestled with um the miz was there too right the miz yeah. was there yeah. the miz was a Doug disaster um who else was there hey, at wasn't the time? samoa joe the guy that wrestled with the candy bar machine when you were no around? that was sabu sabu yeah okay. yeah terry bronk but it's 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 a it's just a a great fraternity of people that spanky you have to you know spanky he was a uh, little guy, wasn't he? Yeah, he's amazing, but yeah. he was with... Little yep. guy? You mean midget? <laughs> no. I say little guy. <laughs> We're not little person. Here. Little person. See, but I, I, more No, he's there. not. He's, uh, you know, he's... My height? The short defense. <laughs> My height? <laughs> but I have, it, it's a, I have a lot of great friends, still to this day. From, yeah, they're amazing people. From my times. And they're you get, amazing people. You, 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 I formed a bond with... A lot of those people that in some ways were so different than me is not even funny, but you, you find a way and become friends. And I and I'm still I still talk to most of them uh, to this very day. I mean, it's it's a just a interesting fraternity of people that um, that um, entertain people. No doubt. All no over doubt. the country, all over the world. And it really I mean, it's it's. It's a great business. It's a tough business, yeah. but it's a great business. So now you were UPW Women's Champion two times, is that right? Yes. And what's that circuit like? I mean, are you just going around? Are these what you call? What'd you call those? Well, I was going to give it well, the most the, the indie circuit. The most indie. disappointing that I've ever seen Bill on this podcast is when Jeff Jarrett tried to explain to him that the industry was choreographed. La 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 la. Well, it's Erica it's not like really. That word. So, I, no, I don't like that word either. So, well, use use there whatever is, word it, what, what you want, but well, he he he, he didn't he didn't want to hear anything like yeah. that. Well, that so in essence, predetermined, whatever right? you want so to call it. it is. I mean, there's storylines, sure. and so the biggest thing is though, you go through a lot of training, a lot of training, so that you can get into the ring with an individual and you can put together a match, and you have an understanding of what each person does. And not only an understanding of what each person does, but you have the ability and the wherewithal to, to react very quickly. So there's communication that's happening in the ring. Obviously, we, we know the predetermined outcome, but really then it's it changes. So based on storylines and how it's received by the public and, and the viewing audience, those things change. And then you'll be in the ring and they'll tell you, you got 11 minutes. And then if it's... You know, if, if McLean doesn't like what he's seeing, he'll be like, take it home and take it home. When we get the signal with our finger, you know, it's you got Wrap it up. You, you got about a minute yeah. to, like, do away with it. Tom, sorry, we do hand signals. Call these hand signals <laughs> I want to know what no, this what Brad this. Uh, OK, this is who's, take a picture a of these two around this way. See? <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense when you. I got it. Yeah, see. So that we can put it on when we put the podcast on, we definitely want to have you there. You're sitting beautifully I underneath love our it. leaning right, turning left. Yes. Big giant poster here in the uh, conference room. And so I try to do these kind of hand signals. <laughs> well, it stops him dead in his tracks. because he doesn't Well, know this what was that like doing. the little man. Tell the little man to <laughs> get, get out of here. And I was like, which one is the little man? <laughs> so now it's ruined. Why, okay? could, why couldn't we, on, Eddie. after the taping, Maybe you and I could go over and take a picture with them two but under the sun. Spontaneous. That was on. We can. Okay. okay. Well, it's not spontaneous now. You've ruined everything, Brad. Didn't understand what I was saying. That's Chad Monday, but his alter ego when he messes things up is Brad Tuesday. So <laughs> he's our producer, and we love having him here. So how long did you do this indie circuit? <laughs> like, I did the indie again? circuit for uh, for a couple years, and then I actually was in Korea and tore my quadricep. Ooh. And so I took a long break after that, had come home. And then shortly after that, WOW was having kind of a relaunch. Mm -hmm. And so we had taken more of a digital media platform. So everything that we were taping, we were taping in Vegas, but we were taping for a digital media platform. Which so that's kind of new. I mean, in, in it that was field, new, that's but a lot of it. Back then. Yeah. A lot of it was so that David could retain control of all of the content. 
So that was one of his biggest things. And all of the different pitches that we've had over the years, we were on Access TV for a little bit. Um, Access TV was owned by Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban ended up selling a portion of that to um, Impact. And so then it became a conflict of interest because they were 50% owners in Access TV and we were both on the same network and they it just didn't make sense. So we, you know, that's a story for another day, but that relationship dissolved. And then, uh, you know, David and Jeannie Buss pitched and Jeannie pitched. Buss, the owner of the Lakers. Yep. So she is our executive producer and she is the financial backer with her own money for WOW Women Are Wrestling. Wow. Yep. Wow, exactly. So you can keep yeah, saying said, that. Wow. <laughs> just, so at this point in time, you're still wrestling. So at this, yeah. So it's wow has I had. Mean, it its looks like, like you could kick my downs. ass. It looks like you really could kick her ass. Definitely, I could definitely I mean, kick your see ass. See them guns? I see. I mean, sun's out. That's gun. why I'm staying over here. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm staying behind you. He's over the here. nice one now, anyway. Yeah. yeah, he's the nice one. Everybody loves him, so he gets free stuff. <laughs> um, so this David McLean, talk a little bit about him too. Um, seems like an innovator. Seems like always going on the edge of of doing things. I'm seeing. I pulled up some of his. He's a visionary. That dude. He's gorgeous a ladies start. of wrestling. Glow, which yep. everybody knows. The women of wrestling. Wow. Yep. Pro beach hockey. Yep. World roller hockey. Yep. World Wrestling Association. The WWA and the Triple Crown of Polo. Yep. Just to name a few. I mean, he he seems to have dipped his professional uh, <laughs> paintbrush in everything. Let's use paintbrush. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so what was it like working with him as an innovator here? I mean, you're at the tip of the spear of whatever he's doing, it seems like. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I started at the beginning of the, basically the reincarnation of what Glow, the, the vision that he had to have an all-women's organization, um, that the storylines were all about the women, and and really integrating kind of personal aspects of each of the individual's lives into their characters and into the storyline so that it just people that are watching are more invested in that particular individual just because there's there's a a different and deeper connection with each of the ladies um he you know he he could sit there and talk with you about uh wrestlers from i mean he traveled and was when it was still uh territories wrestling territories and so he was on those wrestling territories. And what he noticed was the women were like second rate citizens and they just, you know, they didn't get paid anything. They were treated with with very little respect, if any. And so he's like, you know, there. I think that there's a market and I think we could tap into the market. And I think that, you know, I kudos to him because he has seen the bigger picture when others have not. So. It's one of those things where he just has kept pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. And I think now is just the right time for the world to receive what it is that he's trying to do. 20 years ago wasn't the right time. Now is the right time. And so with the backing of Paramount Digital Studios and and CBS and and all of that and Jeannie Buss. Would you like to sponsor a podcast? (laughs) Can you reach out? No? (laughs) She might. She might. I mean, so they're putting this all together. This is really probably a new day, new age, especially WWE uh, women's wrestling has really taken off as well. So it has and a platform. And really, I want to say platform. yes, but I want to say that because of Wow, WWE women's like, I think it was taken more seriously because they looked at it going, "Hey, there's a market here. Maybe they're onto something." And so that's kind of when they evolved and had that women's. You know, and I'll say too, revolution because I was there. The first ever impact used to be TNA right. wrestling pay per view. Um, they took a more serious approach to the women's side of wrestling too, to give it more of a of its own identity and about competition and not just about the the, the looks and the show and and all oh, that. Right. They they gave a lot of girls back in those days. A lot of chances. In fact, I had this conversation a couple of weeks ago with Gail Kim. Um, and, and Gail's amazing. Yeah, we talked about the different, the way it was viewed differently in WWE versus her time at Impact. Well, she's back at Impact now, right? You know, working. But it's kind of like, it for Impact, it wasn't just about you know go out there and look good. It was about 
go and and put on a show right. and do your matches and give them enough time. Right. Because a lot of times, let's just be honest, you watch a, a lot of times on some organizations a pay per view that you know, the guys get ten twelve minutes, the right. girls get three. You know, and so they they spend a lot more time I think trying to give the girls a a platform to actually go and tell stories to your point a little while ago about really what makes it good, not just go do these gimmick matches and things of that nature. So that was fun back in those days. And I think about a lot of the, a lot of the girls that came through, you know, impact, they really appreciated, although the audience wasn't what WWE was and the money certainly wasn't at that time, it gave them an opportunity to go show what they could do at a, and even though Vince would always pretend like he never paid attention, he, he, they watch. And a lot of those girls ended up with opportunities in other areas. And Triple which was H great. had a had a big hand in really changing yeah. the women's division. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it. I think it helps that he's married to Stephanie McMahon, sure. and so sure. of course, whatever she wants to see. But the issue is, once the commentary changed, so once you had the Tazes and the individuals that were talking about the matches, and mm-hmm. it wasn't talking about the puppies, and oh, look at you know, look at oh, you can see cleavage, and you can yeah. when that changed. Oh, oh, that kind of puppy. Yeah, those oh, kind eagles. of puppies. Yes, <laughs> I, mean, me, I know I, you're I, a I, Beagles I, fan. Yeah, Beagles. Oh. They were not talking about. <laughs> Beagle puppies. Yeah. Go back here and giggle. Right. <laughs> when that conversation changed, then that's when I think the respect for mm-hmm. the women in the industry changed. And it took some women actually being willing to speak out, you yep. know, and, and take a stand and say, okay, there's a place for that, but we also got to have a place for us, right. the ones that are serious about performing. Right. In the industry, and I think uh, over the course of time, more and more people listen and continue to listen. And you still have some of the, you know, the the puppies and other things like that. But it's much more of a balance right now with 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 uh, women. And those girls get to go out there now. Well, they're serious and put workers on shows. now. Yeah, so really before are. And they good. weren't serious. And work. good. They're amazing. And good. They're amazing. When I started and I was on the indies. There weren't a lot of women yeah. for me to go and wrestle with, mm-hmm. you know, and so a lot of times we do these, you know, I would be wrestling a man, doink the clown type of thing, mm-hmm. where it was just kind of a, a that's what it was. There <laughs> the was there's a money. doink the clown in every <laughs> single guy. town. Yeah. And so the doink the clown, I'm out there wrestling doink the clown and nobody's taking it seriously because it's like a whole gimmicky match mm-hmm. and it's really, you know, just for fun. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm not really big on the, uh, you know, male female matches anyway mm-hmm. but you know that's me yeah but you know back in the day there weren't many that back in the day i'm talking a lot even in the hot era of professional wrestling hot as probably you know mid late 90s early 2000s there wasn't a lot of women in those shows that could go out and have like a 10 minute match right and now they are they're they're a lot more they and it's kind of because they're training like the men. That's right. So they yeah. understand yeah. how to put together yeah. a match. Yeah. They understand the work ethic. They understand more you athletic know. than show even. I mean, yeah. Oh sure, sure, yeah. More athlete, less glamour. I mean, they're still glamorous, but you know, right? I mean, it's a it's a, it's right. a shame in a lot of ways that it that, the men that it took so long. You know, for or oh, it has taken this long right. to, but but I think the fans have really embraced in more recent years embraced the 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 girls that can actually go for sure i mean you look at i mean we have the largest deal that cbs that that viacom has ever given out to anybody it's a five-year deal with paramount and that's a huge there's not a another show that has ever gotten that from the beginning there's not a wrestling Mm -hmm. you know promotion that has ever gotten that it's just it's remarkable it's unprecedented it's just it's huge. It's huge. And so what is that deal right now? Women of Wrestling, it's got a big deal. What's it going to be showing everybody on the platforms that Viacom has? It's, uh, so it's on all, it's syndicated right now on all of the CBS uh, networks. That is going to change come December. I will not disclose that information just because I yes, don't have liberty. I don't have liberty. You're a lawyer, you know. Um, uh, listen, you have to sign a here, contract. Here, watch, watch. Brad, turn off the mics. Okay, the mics are off. Now let's just talk. <laughs> It will no longer be in syndication. The Where it will wrong. be, I will let. I will. That means I have to come back so I can talk about it. Right. So you have oh, to have me on the idea. show again. Oh, we'd love to have you back. Perfect. You're, Perfect. You are See? A, a spark plug here. Oh, wait a minute. Because you fire up old Listen. Listen. He gets, now he starts talking. About everybody everybody gets invited back. Hey, by the way, 
Well, I'm, I'm inviting myself, even if you don't and invite me. And just wait. Before yeah. the show Can you drive? ends, you're going to be invited to drive our open wheel modified. Can you drive uh, well, I, I, listen, I sent you an email in response. I said, clearly I'm late to this party in my response to you responding. And I said, but I did drive uh, on Talladega's road course. Yes. See? Which, by the way, I beat Carlo. I hit mm. 100 and what did I hit? 128 mm. no, on 180, Tal 180 mm. something. Let's oh, 180 outfit. something. 180 get something. Back, I'm surprised. This is the longest we've gone into an interview that you hadn't uh, offered the guest. I was or, leading up to it, she was right. saying some very compelling things. I was just trying to kind of sneak it in there. But I just pulled it right out. Often yeah. think I am a NASCAR driver. Really? Yes, I do. Well, wrestlers driving cars that are owned by Hermy from the story that we have don't work out so well. So I'm going to hope that you're not going to put it That's in the, the fence when we get you That's the male wrestlers. I wouldn't, there you go. It's the male wrestlers. I wouldn't dare put her in the same box with, with John Leafy okay. at all. So how many times are you wrestling a week right now? I mean, what are you doing? So we just finished taping um, 52 weeks of episodes Ooh. so How long do you do that I all mean, of may so may what did we do may june july and september we did uh three nights in each of those months and so each night is I'm trying to remember each night is four episodes okay. so we just finished our 52nd wow. one on september 21st it's cramming a lot in and a small space. It is a lot. And then what? It's just distributed across, the, right now, distributed across syndication yep. on various platforms. Yep. How do we get the word out that everybody should w be watching WOW? So they need to check their local listings for WOW Women of Wrestling. And you're Jungle Girl, right? Jungle Girl. Now, I, I Jungle my... Girl. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll never do that again. Please don't. Just don't kick my ass. Y'all use female All referees right. also? Yes, we do, actually. Yeah, so you qualify. Like we have one. Showing up on TV. On we have one. Yeah. She's great. Yeah. Now, so Hermie, when he was, Hermie actually wrestled. Did you know that? I know. He did. And he had a signature move. I did background move. checks on you guys. Oh, you, uh oh. I did. Let's talk about that in a minute. <laughs> but Hermie had a move, right? It was where you, you get the guys, it's the face crotch move. What is it? What do you call that? Power driver, power slam. Well, it's power, a, like, a, power bomb. like a sit down power bomb, I would say. But I did a spot with Ron Killings. We did a match together for um, um, Impact or well, TNA when it started. Yeah. Jeff Jarrett had me come in. We were just trying to, and you understand this, back in those days, trying to get the promotion some mainstream media coverage. So Jeff had me come in and I did some appearances. Ultimately, we did a match um, at the auditorium, downtown auditorium in Nashville on pay per view. We had like 8,000 people there. Talking about, I've never been so nervous about anything in my life, but Ron's great, great athlete, and and did it all. Why but, why didn't you wear the Ron, Superman tights? He he thinks it's funny. We did this spot where, you know, Ron came off the ropes and, and jumped up, you know, and I caught him and then did a power bomb in the face. <laughs> he said, "Look, this guy's package is right in your face." I said, "That's a steel shot." I mean, it it, it was a boom boom. Right. Sure it not. happened so quickly. He yeah, said, what do you call that? I said, I recall boom. like a reverse ass something, whatever. And, uh, Ron, <laughs> and he says, it's nothing good you can call that. I mean, look at this. <laughs> it's just nothing yeah. good. So power that, bomb sounds pretty devastating. Power, power bomb's a little better. That but a like sit-out power what, bomb What that. he's not going to say is there may have been some technicalities, but I'm, in fact, undefeated in my pay-per-view wrestling There you career. go. Um, you remind us of it That's so much rights. that I don't think I have to say that. Yeah. Uh, or maybe I wouldn't say that because I know you're going to come up with it. I, mean, I didn't actually I'm get, invite her to drive I think, the car. I think I what one... he's saying is he would like you to bring it up from time to time and just Brad, write that recognize down. him. I uh, write I didn't down. get to I didn't get to one two three, but uh, but I I got the I was able to wait a second get the decision Wait a second. <laughs> wait a second. I need to understand this. So you didn't actually get the pin. You didn't get the one two three. I didn't get to one two three. But when so, Ron Killings, even though I was not a wrestler, was only a race car driver. Ron only, had to only get, a race car driver. He had to use leverage and put his feet up on the ropes uh, when he Bill's pinned me one, driver. two, three, and I thought that was inappropriate. So I filed a grievance with Slick Johnson, <laughs> the the uh, referee. Of course, e you did immediately, and they took it to the higher ups in the next five to ten minutes. Boys in the back. And we got that decision reversed, and they raised my hand. As there goes Hermie to human resources so you were the, in the, you in the were, wrestling world. 
So you were the winner. I was the, I'm undefeated. I love it. <laughs> You're just glossing over the fact that the ref's name was Slick Johnson. Yeah. I'm going to touch that. Slick there you go, Carlo. There you go. <laughs> yeah. we, so, I was leaving that for you. So, you know, so I, from my research here, That's you Slick have two Johnson. great signature moves, obviously, that you don't want the power bottom of, and, or the power and, bottom. And speaking right. of that. No, speak, I have received that. Minute, that is devastating. This is a great opportunity. Yeah. Oh, great by opportunity. the way, from the beast. These, these guys are hung up on Slick Johnson. Yeah. They know by now that this show is sponsored by Manscaped. They do. <laughs> and I'm trying to find the ad copy. Maybe we can get them to read it. No. By the way, those are some of the greatest commercials ever. It's a told you. I told you. That's no, good. You guys. He, oh, oh my God. I get. I get. You've like never this, seen the commercial. Oh, the intro to the, oh, this week's the read. We're doing. Knock yourself out. Not the ones we were doing. <laughs> you may want to read it to yourself. This just. You so may great. want to read it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> just, just have at it. I think you should just just have at it. I think you should. This just portion read it, of this yeah. conversation brought to you by Manscaped. You can go to manscaped.com. Get twenty percent off. Use the code name Sadler for your delivery, but go ahead, cool lady. Get well, twenty percent off, free, sh free, free shipping. shipping. Get the yeah. tools for I your mean, family jewels. You're the ones that couldn't get over. Y'all yeah, the ones that couldn't get over Look, Slick Johnson. A uh, jungle girl appreciates a manscaped. Yeah, I mean you heard it here Gentlemen. first. Yeah, so read it. Be proud. <laughs> like Bill tells me to do. <laughs> what is, this is? Ah, oh, oh my God! Am I supposed to say that word? Yeah. yeah. F <laughs> <laughs> we can bleep that, but go ahead. I said, am I supposed to say it? No, we'll bleep it. They're gonna bleep it. Yeah. Bleep. They shouldn't bleep it though. Oh no, it's a bloodbath in here. There's got to be a better way to get my dagger clean and shiny. Safe. This is a man that should be reading this. Yeah, but you're well, doing great. but that's okay and shiny safely, <laughs> safely than this. This is what I used to deal with when I cut myself shaving before I knew about Manscaped. Thank you, Manscaped, for keeping my dagger slick and ready for whenever the night takes me. Wherever the night takes me, Manscaped is trusted by over 6 million men worldwide. Join the movement by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping with the code SADDLER. Thank you, Jungle Girl. <laughs> Thank you, Manscaped. <laughs> Can you come back next week? We got two more rounds of that. <laughs> wow. And and so uh, assume... and so one more story on Manscaped. <laughs> we get this. Are there multiple? Oh yeah, there's multiple. Oh, there are. So All the right. first time we agree, they sent us this email. Do you want to have Manscaped on the show? And I'm like, uh, Bill immediately. Hell yeah. He emails them back. Yeah, we got to have it. So like two days, three days later, this box comes in. Well, everybody's and, and, got to keep their dagger clean. And my daughter opens shiny up the box. safely. My daughter, my youngest daughter, college age daughter, opens up this box of ball toner and this and that and the other. And uh, hey, Dad, uh, what is this? She FaceTimes him. FaceTimes me when I'm with him. What are all these products? What, 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 what? Yeah, and I get a lecture from his wife. Hermie will not be doing these commercials. And I'm like, oh boy, how am I going to get through this? So we had to cut well, the I first mean, commercial. And so done. I said, my name was Hermie Sadler. Hi, this is Hermie Sadler. I love Manscaped. <laughs> and he was just like, man, I'm like. So we, we have been trying to cut these Manscaped commercials, especially this one. We gave it a dry run, so to speak. And <laughs> and, and it was just a bomb. And so now we appreciate you, Jungle Don't Girl. shave dry. No. Yeah. Don't do it. No. Don't do it. Hey, hey, you're supposed to talk Anything about else, Erica? D uh, on Manscaped? Fine job. Yeah. Fine on job. On Manscaped. Fine Come job. back next week. We, we've got, like Fine I said, job. another another I, round. Now, I want to know where their Womanscaped products are. Well, I, think I mean, there's a market for it, I'm sure. I would, yeah, I, and I would love, amen. I would love to to hear that commercial. <laughs> would you read that commercial if there was a woman escaped? I would be more comfortable reading that than I would really? talking about. What the hell does that mean? Because, you know. Yeah, what does that mean? Because <laughs> on this one, you know, Erica handled it perfectly, but like. Hey. When I know my wife and my daughters are listening to this podcast and I talk about a slick dagger and ready for wherever the night takes me, it's not exactly a. Well, you're a married so, man. It could go anywhere. So, 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 but, but you're willing to say, hey, this is Hermie Sadler. When I'm trying to take care of my hey nanny nanny, I like to put up womanscaped. I mean, that's okay. You don't have a hey nanny nanny. My hey, what did you call you it? A hey it. nanny nanny? Your hey nanny, go nanny, with nanny. It. See, the problem is you're, you're nanny. infatuated <laughs> with this whole conversation. My hey nanny Every time nanny we bring nanny. it up, it turns into a 30-minute deal. I'm going to change with him. the name. So my wife and I had an argument about whether a hoo-ha was the, the outdoor plumbing or the indoor plumbing, and we still have it to this day. You're like, man. 
took and a, I just tried to have a conversation with Bill in the hoo-ha, and she's like, "You don't have a hoo-ha." I'm like, yes, yeah, I, you don't have a hoo-ha. I just so she's to, right. She is correct. She, Lori, you heard it you here first. You do not have a hoo-ha. I do not have, I, and I do not have a hey nanny nanny. Either, right? <laughs> you do not have a hey nanny nanny. That's something you fried. I have a dagger. That's something you fried like. chicken in. Well, that's a handy penny, man. Um, <laughs> But, you know, I try to have this conversation with Bill, and I'm, I'm like, going anywhere I know we've got to have these, these sponsors, but reading what you just read and then having the next, okay, next up, Governor Glenn Youngkin. We'll be right back. <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't, you know, it doesn't work for everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to end the days of shaving your balls, ending up looking like a horror movie. The folks at Manscaped have the perfect package for your package to get this done. The Below the Waist Grooming Leaders have a fourth-generation performance package. That's right, Hermie, performance package. That's what I'm talking about. Your package needs the performance package. Inside, you'll find the Lawnmower 4.0, the trimmer, the weed whacker, the ear, nose, and hair trimmer, liquid formulations, and two it. free gifts. Like the we ball hunter that you love deal. so much. She did it perfectly, short and sweet and simple. Did you ask yeah. the and governor he if he, he used Manscaped? Not yet, but I think we're going to have to get through the advertising <laughs> campaign before we have him on, from what he's saying. So, like, speaking of your best friends, don't forgive your testies the besties that love that they can have with Manscaped's liquid right. formulation. Is this what you were expecting when you guys First made is the a crop to preserver, the... ball deodorant. The ball deodorant. You need that. I mean, you need ball deodorant. Yeah, That's you need a plus. It. That's a Especially if you're doing the power slam with, you know, you need to and maybe put that on beforehand. You know what I'm saying? Power bounce. And don't forget Sit about out, the crop ball. reviver, ball reviver, to give the boys a little boost. You know how the nuts fall in the in the fall? Got to put them right back up in near the tree. I want to apologize <laughs> to all of y'all. So, ladies and gentlemen, don't I'll be forget. leaving here in five minutes going to church. <laughs> Get 20% off and free shipping with the promo code Sadler at, at checkout course, at manscaped.com. That's <laughs> 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use promo code Sadler. <laughs> Sadler, I'd be willing. promo code. S A D S-A-D-L-E-R. I'd be willing. L-E-R. I'd you can put Hermie in there, too, but promo code Sadler. Slay your worst pubes and keep your can dagger you clean off? with Manscaped. I'd be willing. Promo code Sadler. To all of our listeners, <laughs> I'd be willing to pay an extra 10% for the shipping to give 30% off if they use promo code Stanley. <laughs> can you write that up the flagpole? No pun intended. Oh, boy. <laughs> See, you're into this now, aren't you? Yeah. All right, took care of our sponsor. We're very happy to, as you can tell, we're very happy to have Manscaped.com as our sponsor. They must love us back a lot. That's great. They should. So we were talking That's about wrestling great. moves. And how the reason get, why you have... How do we get back yes. into the... To I'm, the I'm trying to get back. It, it, it was your your still picture with the uh, sit-up power bomb. It, yeah. yeah. It sent him off and, and, but into then this I, Manscaped tangent. Right. And and uh, But I've seen you got a couple uh, moves. That t- I can't get Manscaped out of my head right now. Top rope splash. What is that? Oh, that Jungle is... Jungle Girls top rope splash. It is the most devastating, beautiful... Artistic. Artistic, Ooh, yeah. powerful mm-hmm. finisher... Known to any human. Found at the end of the artismal streams of, of old Greece. I mean, tell me about it. I mean, Describe it is. It. Can you, can you show it, it actually to her? It is. Yes, can you do I one on her? Could. Could, her could you is, take the top rope splash? It, well, it depends on if she would. The, the woman's I know that you know Superfly Snooker. I do. It was uh, Superfly. So I grew up a huge Superfly Snooker fan. Yep. And so I really did it as a tribute and then just, uh, I think I did it better. But hey. no disrespect to Snooka. So describe it for our, because we don't have TV. So stuff. this is like, you know, like an eagle soaring through the, the sky, like ready to dive and catch and kill something. That's mm. me diving off the top rope onto my prey in the middle of the ring. Hitting the water like an eagle and taking, with its talons, yes. the prey out of the water, right? Yes. Are you mind? All right, so I want you to get up on this table. Hermie, you're standing right over there. No? <laughs> I'm still getting I thought getting you said it was creative. Choreography. All right, now the second one, you weren't a one-move type of wrestler. Here. No. You've got a second move, the jungle driver. The jungle driver is typically my that's setup. JBL, by the way. For the I'm that's for, an amazing look, picture. I'm looking for another picture, but uh, he's. But I scroll. <laughs> you are lying. I don't know what your mother didn't like about that. Yeah. yeah. I watched every minute of him oh, out him there the, for the last the, uh, twenty minutes, and I don't get it, Hermie. That's amazing. That is an interesting habit. That is yeah. amazing. Hermie, he's got well, this thing. <laughs> who's to say it was a habit? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this did you clean Hermie the seat after? On his phone. What I want to know was he manscaped on an ATV. <laughs> what, I, what I really want to know was he manscaped. Uh, I, I the was, pictures don't show. I was running. 
pictures don't. I was running. I asked him to take out the trash five times. <laughs> Hermie, you're friends. I just don't want to think. Now, we're, we're going to. I'm serious. This is actually, a, it usually is a funny show. Uh, jungle Driver, the Jungle Driver. <laughs> And I say jungle driver, he pulls out a naked wrestler on an ATV. <laughs> One more time. That is definitely, I'm looking that for is definitely a, not the picture. jungle driver. <laughs> no. That's a whole different uh, yeah. that's the, jungle. I mean, yeah. that's definitely. That's the twig and berries. You know, that's the twig and berries. <laughs> that's the, that would be a look, great finishing. Carry on amongst yourselves. I'm going to take about a two minute recess. <laughs> you could pull up the jungle driver and show him. Oh, could I? He you could, could, yeah. You so could. describe the jungle driver to me. I mean, so the, the jungle driver, of the top rope splash. Now, is that the jungle driver? Yes. So the the jungle driver typically happens prior to the jungle splash. But the are you jungle driver, a moment, like you wonder, like why the hell are we here? Lifting, lifting the individual up oh. so that they are now upside down. I'm holding them, and uh -huh. then I sit out with them. Huh. And so it's the impact of them hitting the ground, and then I typically painful. climb up the top. The ropes and to the finisher? top turnbuckle and I finish them because wow. I don't believe in just I need to make sure they're done yeah that sounds fierce done ever done something like that no 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 but it sounds I fell off a fence one it's time. amazing it's <laughs> did you it's say a... you fell off a fence yeah chip my tooth right here <laughs> you're like Humpty Dumpty fell off that's it fence. that's all I did that's a, <laughs> as close as I got to whatever this jungle driver is I drove my face right into the damn piling on the fence <laughs> So, you know, that's kind that's, of like what I do. To so, so how, <laughs> all right. At what, uh, at, 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 at what point can we talk about the charity? We're going to get to okay. that. Yeah, we're, we're getting there. Okay. This is all the setup for it. So how many? This is story you, like storylines. You got it. It's the build, right? Keep we're meeting keep them, Erica and Carla for the first they, they, time. They've got to wait There's for no all of that information. And you got the otherwise they would have the turned women off on both already. ends of the table. Like these perverts yeah. have a podcast. Yeah, we have her promoters here. And <laughs> luckily one of them knows me. So she probably told her this is what to expect. <laughs> Um, oh, no I way. listened. I told you. No I way. did my background. Both of them actually help our Republican caucus when they're not helping great people like you, Erica. So I am probably going to be shunned uh, well, from my Republican caucus from evermore. Plan on running for office. I know oh, where to go. Carly, Carly <laughs> Mugford, Carly Mugford, Mugford Nelson, Nelson Mugford. That's her. She's the best. So, how many times do you wrestle in a year? I mean, is it just in this package? That's what I was trying to. That's yeah, what Bill package he's referring to. Oh, I know what it is. Let me see. Yeah, I'm very savvy on these moves. Friendly. So Hermia is showing now a picture on his phone of him taking it in the face from. <laughs> that's not really what it's dudes. called. <laughs> yeah, so that's not the. Let's move. just imagine where you manscape is right there, <laughs> right there like a helmet on Hermia's face. It's right there like a helmet. Like a helmet. It's more like a face mask. <laughs> Maybe a face mask. See, I'm trying to give it back leather. to him here, but I'm not. I'm not quite tall enough. What in the blue blazes is Let that? Let me see that. We're going to have to put these pictures up on our this. website. This is amazing. Yeah. So that's Hermie Sadler wrestling. Ron Joel Killings. Girl oh, is this looking is great. At. Yeah. Now, who are you wrestling this? This is great. Who is the wrestler? Ron Killings. Ron the truth. Slick Johnson. Oh, that was Slick. Mm -hmm. slick Brought to you by Johnson. Manscaped. He looks like a Slick. Dot com. <laughs> um, you can't even see the guy in the back. <laughs> There's a little bit of Slick right there. He was that's WCW awesome. for years. But yeah, he, I know who he is. Yeah. And he was a wrestler. I know who he is. Yeah. Okay. So how many times again are you wrestling a year? I mean, I mean, are you just doing the wow or do you then go on the show? No, so I am just... House shows? House shows. House yeah. shows, non-televised event. So I really, after wow had made its, its several comebacks, after I was I wrestling you. I with UPW you. And, and on the Indies... And I even apologize to Carlo, too. <laughs> you, why are you apologizing? Look, they came up here with their own free will. Yeah, guilty conscience. And then anybody else who is listening is listening Party. because it's amazing. Yeah, it's exactly. amazing. I mean, what's not to listen to? All right, Donnie if still Downer. Listening, they probably don't need. Oh, to they are totally still listening. <laughs> yeah, they're totally <laughs> still listening. This is like uh, driving slow past two, an auto we wreck. We hit two weekly listeners. This is the we're best show ever. My mom will always highest listen. ratings. My mom will always listen. So we're up to two. We'll stay at two. All right, your mom and my mom. <laughs> So, so you're just doing right we're now three the and W. Four. Oh, there you go, W W W right now. Yes. Wow, women of wrestling. Yes. And that's that's basically it. What do you mean basically it? No, no. I mean you're not doing. How telling. That is, that telling. is terrible. Telling. You can punch I mean, me in the throat right here. And so you're we, just a senator. Yeah. Yes. Right? Yes. Just a senator. senator. <laughs> yes. You're right about no that. No big deal. Mm -hmm. Hey, Hermie, you got any more questions? We've come a long <laughs> way. From, we've come a long way from. 
why are we having a dopey mayor from Tennessee to having uh, yeah, that's, Erica on it's the show? It's amazing. The, the Wow Women of Wrestling is extraordinary. Okay. It's on every Saturday. How's the pack? Have you watched it yet? How's the pack? No, I haven't. I'm here talking to you. And, and I'm, I'm, believe me, I am going to watch the hell out you of it. You should watch the hell out of it. Especially to see Jungle Girl you do from to. the top rope splash to the Jungle Driver finish. Yeah. No, you got it mixed up. Well, do the, the Jungle game. Driver to, for the top, to the top rope, rope splash rope. finish. Yes. Okay. To make sure it's the job is done. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Pardon me. Yeah, the job is done, really. I had my moves reversed, but I don't have your move reversed. <laughs> This is not about you, me, <laughs> you have This is not about me, unfortunately. We can make it about you again no, if you'd like. No, I'm, no, we've we've been having fun. I would also. say I'm just happy to be here, but I'm not so sure <laughs> at the also, moment. We're also, believe me, uh, go back in the library, uh, Carlo, when you're listening to the podcast, the Leaning Right and Turning Left with Sadler and the Senator podcast, the shows are better. They seem to just be degenerating here to a, to a point where, what do you call them? A shit show, right? Your words, not mine. Okay. No, you've said it. you said it a bunch of times that I've... I'd say it to you. Show. I wouldn't say it necessarily in front oh, of the okay. guest. All right. <laughs> she said the F word. I did not. I, but we're going to bleep I it. asked if I was supposed to say <laughs> you it. You did. You did great. You gave me confirmation that was to the best, say it. That was the best Manscaped yeah. testimonial in I the history mean, of Manscaped. Yeah, you I, know. Think, I think now I'm not going to be bitched at by Hermie about the Manscaped commercial and how we do it, because you did it perfectly. So, Perfect. So we Perfect. appreciate I'll that. come back. But you, you know, you're For a just, small fee, I'll come back every Small fee. A small fee. Absolutely done. Yeah, we, we got that in the budget with the race team, right? This is this I is could always oh. use some legal advice here and there. So Dag Nabbit, it's a done deal. Okay. We got a deal. There you go. So, you know, you're wrestling. You look fit as a fiddle. I mean, uh, you're born in, well, I, it's rude to tell you what you're, you're born in. I was born, born in 1974. In, that's rude. I, will, I am just a couple weeks away from being 48 years old. I mean. 48 years young. Just a puppy. I'm just a puppy. <laughs> like a beagle. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come here. So, cute. <laughs> uh, so, but, you know, you've been fighting another fight, too. You don't fight just inside the ring. You've got to fight outside the ring as well, which kind of brings you to why we're here today talking yes. about culminating in a huge event that you're going to be doing. You know, tell us about that, that fight outside the ring and why it's so important to you what you're doing. So in June of 2020, I was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer. Wow. And so... I believe that my entire life really prepared me for that moment and the days that would come after, which are really, um, I believe in movement being powerful. I believe that it is not only empowering, but it also allows us to, to stay grounded, to be emotionally well, to tap into the feeling, which is what endorphasm is, the moment during physical exertion or doing, during movement of any kind that you feel all things are possible. And for me, having that in my life and every step of the way has been incredibly powerful for me because it has allowed me to tap into that feeling and to recognize that all things are possible, no matter what they were. So there was a big disconnect for me when I went in, I received my diagnosis and, you know, th the conversation is heavy and they're talking about treatment and they're talking about here's your prescription for the wig. And if you need financial assistance and if you need, you know, mental assistance. And there was never a moment in which the doctor or the nurse practitioners or whoever was involved in the conversation said to me, OK, listen, we have your treatment part of this. This is, we, we can do this. There's an aspect of, of all of this that is yours to control and that is movement and it's powerful. And even when you feel tired, if you move, it seems counterintuitive, but the more you move, the better you feel. And so being a fitness professional for the last 28 years, almost th really 30 years, it'll be 30 years in a couple weeks. Um, we all know the benefits of, of movement just in general for people in general. I mean, we were, we were built, the human body was designed to move. There is, there is no argument there, right? From the beginning of time, everything from hunting and gathering and walking sex, to the fridge for uh, rice crispy treats that too, every morning, all with a half of gallon of milk. milk. And milk. Oh, milk. All of that. And we've <laughs> moved so far away from that. 
And so that's where you start seeing just, you see depression through the roof. You see just people living these very unhealthy lifestyles. And I'm not here to, to, to talk about, you know, what people should or shouldn't be eating, but there are okay. aspects of our life. I've been that sucking in my stomach the whole time you've been talking. So <laughs> thank you for saying that. I do believe that everything in moderation, even moderation. Okay. Life is to be enjoyed. Yes. Have a crown, whatever makes you happy. So it was one of those situations where I realized when people started asking me, you know, what can we do for you? Can we cook you dinner? Can we? I'm like, listen, I am capable of doing everything myself. And what I realized was there was this kind of, I, I wanted to bridge the gap between what the medical community can do and mm -hmm. what somebody can do for themselves. Yeah. And that's movement. And that's moving through cancer, moving through life. And so I founded the Endorphasm Foundation in September of 2020, really to empower individuals to move through cancer and to move through life. For them to retain a critical aspect of their care, which is self-care, and that is powerful. And when I get people that have never moved before and they come in and they they take advantage of the endorphasm foundation classes that we offer free to cancer patients that have been diagnosed survivors warriors and their caregivers they they walk in a little bit defeated and deflated and a little sad and tired and even after the first time that I that I get to work with them they leave and their shoulders are back and their chins are up higher and they just feel better and they just feel stronger. But there's something to be said about that confidence and how people can carry themselves forward from that moment that cancer is not the defining factor here. I am a mother, I am a wife, I am a business owner. I am so many things, I happen to have cancer. But that is not the defining factor for me. And I don't want it to be the defining factor for other people. You're, uh, wow. My mom. Wow, like wrestling. Wow. My mom has been through a two-time survivor, and it's inspiring to hear, like from you, that not too long in the process, you started to think about other people. How can I help inspire other people? But my question is, because it's different for everybody, how long did it take for you to, if you ever felt bad or? sorry for yourself how long did it take you to get over that and take care of your business before you could turn your attention and try to turn your crusade into something that was going to be uplifting for other people because the first time because everybody tells you the people around you have to be positive sure it takes the people you know and you and you ultimately have to be positive yourself the first time my mom was like we got this Let's get on board. This is what we're going to have to do. This is what I'm going to need from y'all. Let's rock. The second time, it, it took a while. She was, she was beat up over it. And, it you know, she luckily still nine years later, knock on wood, and thank God she's she's doing okay. It's great. But how long for you when you get that first diagnosis, the, does it go from, okay, I got to take care of myself, but at the same time I want to inspire other people to to – uh, do good things and try to help them be positive with things going on in their life too. So I, there was never a point that I felt sorry for myself. There was never a point where I felt um, sad. My biggest, my feeling was for Carlo and for my son who was 11 at the time, how do I explain to him what's happening to his mother, mm -hmm. you know, during COVID and everything, when things are shut down and, you know, it's one of those situations where that was my, my biggest issue because I've had a great life. I have not a single regret. I have done extraordinary things. I have done, I have served people my entire life to, to be better, to, to get better, to do better. And so if it ended tomorrow, I've had a great life. Carlo's the one that's got to pick up the pieces when I, when I leave. My son's the one that has to pick up the pieces when I leave. So for me, it's not about me. It's how do I 
stay in a frame of mind that gives them comfort and that um, leaves them okay with everything that is happening in, in a sense where I believe this foundation will be my legacy, more so than the gym that I own, more than anything, this will be my legacy because it will serve people that, that need it. That, that need it. I mean, we all need movement, but it will serve a very underserved um, area of, of treatment and care. Uh, so for me, it was just, you know, it's when people kept asking me, what can we do? And I'm like, I don't need anything. Like I have everything that I need. I'm capable of doing everything. And in fact, I want to do everything. I want to keep my life as normal as I possibly can. So at no point in time did I feel like the victim in, in any particular situation. And I, I really, one of the things that I'm a huge advocate for is personal responsibility and accountability for self. And this was the biggest test of all of that. How do I stay 100% accountable, uh, accountable in my life for myself? And how do I move forward in a way that's serving not only myself, but my my partner in life and my son and, and other people? And so it was really easy to, to say, okay, this is what I want to do. It's not as easy getting people to, to buy in to what I'm doing. That's part of, you know, coming onto shows like this and really talking about what, what our mission is and what the vision is for the foundation, because it's difficult when people receive a diagnosis to be like, Oh, let me Google where I should work out, which is why we're recruiting and engaging oncology clinicians at Massey, at Bon Secours, every place. And really, I just touched the mic and really trying to get them to, to be the first point of contact for these individuals to say, hey, listen, we know that this is happening. We got this. Now this is what you can do. How do you, you mentioned your foundation. How do you, um, other than this podcast and your wrestling shows coming up, how do you get the word out about your foundation and how do people that want to get involved in it, support it in some way, how do they, how do they do that? So, I mean, a lot of it is our education piece of going in and really speaking with the oncologists, all the oncology clinicians all over, and really expressing and, and really making them understand what we do. And we just did a beautiful piece with Massey, and Massey is is distributing it, you know, with their, their doctors and their patients, uh, which I think is critical. So we are a community partner with them, which is huge. So when you have an organization like Massey that's saying, hey, listen, this is one of our partners. These are services that are there for you. Uh, that's a big step in it. Gives it credibility. It is credibility. Yeah, yeah. It's credibility, but it's also letting people know that mm -hmm. we exist and taking advantage. We're ready to serve the community we just need them to come in and, and and utilize our services which are all free to the individuals so they can find information at endorphasmfoundation.org we are hosting a huge um fundraising event on november the weekend of november 5th and 6th which uh we have a vip sponsored dinner at the commonwealth club on saturday november 5th and uh, listen, we're still looking for title sponsors for that event. So if anybody is interested, they can go to the website, go to our events and look up more information or, or reach out to me. My number, 310-634-5645. I will take your call. Honestly, I will take your call. I will talk about it. I could talk about it all day. So you talked about an hour of speaking. I could sit here for three hours and talk to you more than we that. We love that. I, I love it. Hermie's got some place to go, but I'd love it. No, Hermie, where are you going? What are you talking about? Oh, was, he just said that in case it wasn't going to be an interesting conversation. No, no, I didn't want to bind up his time. Oh, He's a busy man. He's you, the one if you need to go, you hour. can go. All Not right. me. Caught, I'm here all day. Caught me again. And it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month here in October. It is. And so this makes it even more poignant. So we're having actually a, a Wrestling with Cancer VIP sponsors dinner. Yes. Saturday, November 5th. At Which Tumble. you will be at. Hermie, are you going to be there too? Yes, he will. I will be there. Perfect. Yes. So, yeah, I've been asked here. to MC. Yes. Can I tell jokes? Oh, Carly? please. No, no jokes? No okay. jokes? Come on, Carly. We'll what? talk about it. How oh, about I, I pre-write them pre-screen? He gave me some of the jokes before. Yeah, yeah. the ones you thought were funny. Um, but I'm looking forward to that. What an honor and privilege. Maybe a... Hermione and I think you and McLean will hit it off, believe it or not. I think that you will be huge, huge... 
Oh, good. Fans of one another. I'm already a big fan of him and just would have written. Yes, but huge you can, fans. There's still tickets available for this? There are still tickets available for that. And li- listen, so that VIP event is it's not just about you emceeing the event. It's going to be amazing. There are going to be 10, 11 with myself, wow women of wrestlers in character at this event the wow. only time you're going to get all these women together we've got a, a a beautiful photo opportunity to do it you know we've we have some doctors and some uh, oncology pts that will talk about just you know their support of our mission and our vision uh we have hitting cancer below the belt we have uh, mindy from that organization that's going to come and and speak and share kind of her insights and why this is so critical for no matter what cancer you might have. So it's an opportunity. It's a meet and greet with the, with the women. It's an opportunity for a Q&A with the women at the end of the evening. It's it's going to be a one-of-a-kind event, and people should be there. And if you have a, a, a company, we want to you know promote your corporation, your company. We'll put your logo all over the place. We'll talk about it. We have... Um, what what uh, let me mention some of the uh, does this have well sign me up that we um, currently have Carly sign me up so we have I'm donating Wegmans and we have um, Thompson Davis and we have Endorphasm the gym and we have Hardy, Hardy Brewery Wood yeah. and White Cap Construction White Cap Construction <laughs> Street <laughs> Level Agency. Jiu-jitsu. Jiu-jitsu. Oh, street level jujitsu. Yes, of course I know that. It was being said to me very quietly, and I was street level jujitsu. Um, maybe uh, Stanley Law Firm. Uh, yeah, the Stanley Law Group is now Stanley signed on. Five. Va we'll Stanley Law Group dot com. We'll, we'll definitely make you some kind of significant didn't donation. No, yes, perfect. Yeah, but everybody needs to come out. Uh, that's the Wrestling with Cancer VIP sponsorship dinner. Sponsors dinner Saturday, November fifth. 5.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at the Commonwealth Club. That's 401 West Franklin in downtown beautiful Richmond. And the Commonwealth Club is a beautiful venue to have. It is a beautiful something venue. Something like that. But but that's not all. That's not all. Now, that, you got to be a $1,000 donator you right, do. to get to go to that you to do. the sponsors. You attend a private cocktail hour for that $1,000 sit-down dinner. The Q&A that you, you just talked about. You do have Crown Royal. Just putting it out there for people. <laughs> MC'd by uh, the great Senator Bill Stanley. And with the Wow Superheroes to sponsor and us. more. I can't wait. I'm going to have to think up some wrestling jokes and some doctor jokes. I uh, never thought I'd have those two in combination. <laughs> and then, though, it doesn't end there. It doesn't end but there. But yet there's this more. This is an epic event Wrest- of wrestling, wrestling proportions. Yes, Wrestling with Cancer main event Sunday, November 6th of this year at Hardywood Park. That's the Hardywood Brewery at 2410 Ownby Lane in Richmond, Virginia. Um, let's see, from 10 to 11, you have a superhero workout. Yes. Hermie will be there for that one. He'll stand in for me. And all levels <laughs> and all ages are welcome. He wants to lose six pounds. Yeah. He's going to come on. back to. Do a superhero put workout. Zero, yeah, put you back to zero. And then from 11 to 2, you'll have a meet and greet with the GLOW and WOW legend David McLean, Selena Majors, and 11 of the WOW Women of Wrestling superheroes. Yes. And you'll have beer. And we have Blair's West Band that will be playing. Blair's West Band's playing? You, yes. And you can get in there for just like a $25 minimum donation, but give more. This is such a great event. So that's that's going to be an awesome two-day event you guys, guys have going I right now. I think so. And uh, it's going to be epic a- epic proportion. Can't miss. Sadler Brothers Oil, are you going to be represented? You coming in? I'm, since you've added this to my calendar during the show, I'm- clearing my calendar at the moment oh very good tell me what i need to do hey, wh- hey if jeff jarrett's listening you at to the this commonwealth we club. ought to get double j out we can try to get double j out here do you think we can get him to drive the car oh See, he's not paying attention to me right I'm, now I'm, I'm actually working on it you you keep signing me up for you shit, could take mclean for a little spin yeah, yeah. so l- listen let's uh let's get out there and let's support this we're going to promo this uh twitter and on our social media pages Let's make this a big thing. Yes. Because c- cancer, defeating cancer is a big thing. It is. My father thing. passed away uh, after fighting cancer for 14 years uh, and was my hero all the way through it and never gave in, never gave up. And that's what he always used to tell me. And it was inspirational and has shaped my life in knowing that I'm here on this earth to do something about the gift of life that God has given me. And clearly, without any reservation, 
you are the same, Erica. You yeah. are quite a life force. And, uh, and Carlo, you're the quiet one my dad used to say you should be worried about, you know. <laughs> Always watch it's out for true. the quiet guy. You know what I mean? Say that. It's true. But uh, uh, it may or may not be true. Well, you've got such a strong personality there as your better <laughs> half. I mean, uh, my wife can't get a word in as well as when I'm around. I mean, she just sits there like a stoic person. Well, he does. He, he, you know, he just when when it's valuable, like Slick Johnson, he pointed that out. I mean, when that's it's really valuable. That was good. She has a lot to say, and she has a lot of really important things to say, and she says them all very, very well. Mm -hmm. There's not a whole lot for me to do. Except look pretty. Yeah, thank you. Know, you. It's, it's the thank burden you. that you and I both right, carry as right. being the, the husbands of our spouses mm -hmm. is just trying to look nice. But listen, pretty. without Carlo, I really would not be here. He is my uh, my eye dotter and my T crosser and, and keeps me very focused because I am kind of, uh, I see shiny objects. I'm like the squirrel in every movie. I'm like, ooh, shiny. Yeah. Ooh, acorn. Ooh, this. My wife and calls so, that the butterfly effect. I go, ooh, butterfly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I think it's ADD that was never diagnosed, but uh, my wife calls it the butterfly effect, right? <laughs> so you got to bring him in. Yeah, That's, but you get stuff like done. my wife a lot. You get stuff done. So uh, I think it's Not just according to her. Hi, oh, well. No, no. Okay, never mind. According to me, never mind. yes. According to her, <laughs> no. Maybe, maybe not her things. They don't get no. done. Other and, things clearly and, get done. Carla, I don't know about you, but... Just to get off topic here a little bit. Um, so we didn't do that at yeah. all. So when I clean the house, clean the kitchen, or make a great meal, because I do the cooking, I want to be praised. I want her to say, that was a great vacuuming of the hallway. <laughs> and she never does. And then when I go, hey, honey, I vacuumed the hallway. Look at the carpet. And she goes, oh, yeah. Check do me you out. do that for her? Yes. You do? Absolutely. You praise her on that? What does she do? I'm like, my laundry is like the crispest, clean... No, I probably don't. Um, so I need to do that in order. You have to give so that you receive. Well, yes. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So, but you know what I'm talking about. But it depends on what people's Constantly, love languages are. Constantly, are we as men? Are. Oh, love language. I don't know. I just heard this the other day. Yeah. He asked me what my love language was, and I said, I don't know. I love people. Yeah. Love people. Does that is that a love language? So there's some app or something. Uh, Autumn Johnson, who's an attorney. One time we were having lunch. She's an attorney in our firm. Said, "What's your all's love language?" And we're like. Look, I'm 55 years old. Here's my love language. <laughs> Thank you. That's my love language. Well, your your love language is you like praise. Praise. Yeah. So I get perhaps upset if, you, if, if I don't cook my wife's steak right. If you get seriously, I absolutely take it personally. I think you should tell her my laundry smells really great today. I think so her, clean. I, think. I look very handsome. Thank you very much yeah. because of you. All right, I'm gonna write this down. I mean, you've been very helpful. Is there anything else that is I'm here for endorphasm you. also offers like therapy <laughs> and maybe lessons as a husband that's needs what, to know about that's, his wife? That's the point during physical exertion that you feel all things are possible. So when you move a little bit more, you these things come to you. It clears your mind. So that's what you exercise see things. is about. Yes. Oh, I'm going to have to give this shot. Give it a shot. really is. Hey, Hermie, we're going to be doing something called exercise next week. Because <laughs> it makes our brain Don't call it exercise. Just call us, it you know moving. That, smarter you know, with our wives. Bill, you know that three-second period of time when your wife welcomes you into the bedroom, when you think all things are possible, that three seconds before you think everything is possible till it's over, that's what she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard her say no. <laughs> that's I, Eric just because that's the no period, isn't it? When they say no, 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 I, I was I was more emphasizing the three second period All right. <laughs> between then. And... That's the point he wanted to make. Yeah, <laughs> go back to your phone. It went good. with the conversation <laughs> of the two inches. My yeah. word, this is uh, this is uh, really awesome. Does anybody know how to pull up a Google Calendar that doesn't want to work? And there apparently, I don't know the right, right password. Well, Erica Porter, um, what an inspirational story you are. We're going to have to have you back on. Yes. Uh, we have to get you ready to drive the open wheel modified Sadler Stanley Race oh, Team 22. Yes. Um, put that her down on the list, okay? Of my year. Uh, again, uh, I'm looking really forward to, and, I, and I'm honored and privileged. Do I have to, uh, to do it naked, or should I be dressed? To, cowboy boots and a cowboy hat. Well, um, <laughs> hmm, hold on. Give us one second. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> But Carlo does too, just to be fair. I'll be <laughs> um, so, you know, what, what an exciting uh, thing we have coming up on November 5th. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please, November 5th and 6th in the beautiful capital of the Commonwealth in Richmond, Virginia, uh, sponsor Wrestling with Cancer, the VIP sponsor dinner. Sounds like a great time. 
We're going to have one of the most hilarious comedic MCs ever that can ever be produced for free. And uh, or am I getting paid? Am I getting paid, Carly? No, I'm not getting paid. In crown. And then Royal. Sa- Sunday, wrestling with cancer main event. Uh, it starts at ten and ends at uh, two o'clock at Hardywood Brewery. Uh, the Saturday night event is at the Commonwealth Club. I can't wait to be there at both events. I can't wait to support what you're doing. I can't wait to use the word endorphasm. Is that what I just said? Yes. As often as possible. See, to my wife. Yes. Honey, are you ready for some endorphasms? And then after she throws a shoe at me, it'll be I'll explain to her what it is. Yes. Or she she listens to the podcast. Maybe she'll know, and I don't get a shoe. To you didn't her even face. get the joke about the three seconds because in wrestling it's one, two, three. Yes. The match is over, and you. Sometimes you get- though. It's longer than three seconds. Sometimes it feels like 10 minutes that they're counting the one, two. So you had your mind in completely the wrong three. place? I did. Are, you, are you still in, 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 in innuendo with that? Or are you still yeah. <laughs> we double entendring yet? Are we done with those? Or am I? <laughs> but ladies You'll and never gentlemen, know, Carlo. You go to the Endorphasm Foundation, Endorphasm foundation dot org yes we are uh, a 501c3 so all of the donations are tax deductible please donate this is an, uh, one hell of an organization as we fight cancer the scourge of cancer that affects so many families it affected mine it's affected yours it affects Hermes. everybody here at the table uh, we want to fight we want to win uh, and that fight goes on inside the ring and outside the ring and so with that, Erica Porter, thank you so much for being on Leaning Right and Turning Left with Sadler and the Senator. Yeah, we have to actually read the sign behind you to make sure we don't get it wrong, because half the time I'm saying, thanks for leaning left and turning right. And I'm not a liberal Democrat, so, uh, but some of my Republican friends say I lean left, but which I don't. But uh, we really, really enjoyed this. We, I we, like the fact that you had to clarify that. I did. A couple, well, I had to look at Carly Nelson, uh, actually, who runs our fundraising for our caucus, and she's somebody that I think the world of as well. But, but can't wait to be there again. It's gonna, it's gonna start on November fifth. Uh, at five thirty p.m. at the Commonwealth Club. That's the VIP dinner. Give that thousand dollars. Be out there. It's something you're not going to want to miss. Let's make this an annual event. Let's make a difference. And then the next day at the Hardywood Brewery, uh, right there in downtown Richmond, uh, from ten to two. So yes, thank and these you. women are extraordinary. The superheroes are just extraordinary. McLean is extraordinary. I'm really excited for the Richmond, Virginia area to to get to know the wow women of wrestling. And that's that's a one-of-a-kind thing you don't want to miss. And maybe, uh, as I'm emceeing, I might get one of the wow women of wrestling to actually do a power move on my friend and former <laughs> undefeated pro wrestler, Hermes Adler. I cannot be putting my Pay-per-view undefeated. undefeated defeated streak on the line, per se. Uh, He's been advised. But, <laughs> your agent told you. You know, yeah, I mean, never say never. I've learned in life and certainly in wrestling, never say never. What a great interview. Hey, and look, do you know what do you know what the difference was here today? I brought the superstar out. You brought the superstar. Finally. And by the way, in addition to all the great charitable work and putting the word out for November fifth and sixth, the best, should I say, cleanest manscaped read we've had on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, 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 indeed. Indeed. And she'll be back next week. We're gonna have to tape here. Does that mean I get to take the back. sword home? Yeah. I win? Sure. You win. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't kick my ass. <laughs> Especially when the mics are on. <laughs> Erica, we love having you. We got to have you back. My pleasure. God bless you. Godspeed in your fight. Thank you. Godspeed in your messaging and your, and your vision and that legacy that you talk about. We're going to have a lot more time to talk about that. And uh, you just are an inspiration to me. I hope I hope she is uh, to everyone who's listening as she is for me and for Hermie Sadler. And to get Hermie Sadler to change his calendar while we're talking so that he can appear at the Endorphasm Foundation's Wrestling with Cancer event on November 5th, starting at 530, November 6th, starting at 2 p.m. That takes a lot. 10 a.m. Starting at 10 a.m. Oops. 10 a.m. Well, I had it here on November 6th at 2 p.m. I well On your stuff. You might want to change that. Yes, I will change it. You'll have to go over. He's not going to be wrong. It's all right. He fi- he fi- he fixed it. Yeah, fixed yeah. it. It did say two p.m. November six at correct. ten a.m. So you could have he is and Hardywood correct. not call them out on the show. You could have. We could it's, have. Listen, that's how we learn. I'm oh. okay with okay. being. Good. I'm confident <laughs> with who I am. <laughs> I'm confident yeah. with who I am. Okay, right, you're wrong. But <laughs> speaking of manscape, he didn't have the balls. 
to, to <laughs> look at you when he was calling it out. He was looking that way and this way. Because I know who wrote this up. Carly Mugford, Nelson Mugford, Nelson Nelson Mugford. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to another episode of Leaning Right and Turning Left with Sadler and the Senator. I'm Virginia State Senator Bill Stanley, and I'm Leaning Right. And I'm Hermie Sadler, and I'm Turning Left. We'll see you November the 5th at the Commonwealth Club, 401 West Franklin Street, Richmond, Virginia. And November 6th is where, Senator? Hardywood Brewery. And that is located at the, that's at the uh, you know, it's at uh, Own B Lane. It's 2410 Own B Lane, Richmond, Virginia, 23220. See you there. And God see bless you next you week all. on the podcast. God bless you all. Listen, man, I know it sounds too good to be true, but I want you to just do me a favor and run on over to savewithconrad.com. Get yourself a quick quote. My man, Andy M just left us a five-star review over at conradreviews.com. And he had this to say, the effort and communication from Josh was above and beyond. We ran into several unexpected hiccups along the way, but Josh kept us informed and kept looking for options to get things done. In the end, we were still able to refinance to a 15 year loan, where we're going to be able to pay it off in 10. And we took enough cash out to pay off our credit cards, my truck loan, and even buy my wife her very first new vehicle. We're going to save over $500 a month from what we would have been paying without the refinance. We can't thank everyone enough. Now, guys, that right there is a win-win-win situation. Let me explain. Over the last couple of years, your house is probably worth more than ever. Now, what you do with that equity is up to you. And what I'm going to recommend is we do what our man Andy did. Andy took himself from a 30-year loan down to 15 years, but he's planning to pay it off in 10. Now, how can he afford to do that? We got rid of all his credit card debt, just like that. We got rid of his truck loan, and we even got him enough cash to get his wife a new vehicle. The result? Cheaper monthly payments. How does that happen? How do you get a new car, pay off a truck, and get rid of your credit cards and cut years off your loan? You go to savewithconrad.com. We're going to get you cheaper monthly payments, and how's this for starters? No house payments for the next two months. That's right. You can skip your next two payments. You don't need perfect credit. You don't need money out of your pocket. And buddy, if we can't help you save some cash, we won't waste your time. And here's the best part. We don't say no. We say not yet, but here's how. Now, I don't care if you were late here or there. Maybe you had a bankruptcy back in the day. Maybe you were late on a credit card. We're going to help you figure out how to get in the situation that your family needs now and long-term. We want to be your mortgage advisor for life at savewithconrad.com.